How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Rolling Lines and Apples and Geno's production. My name is Josh Hutchinson, and I'll be your host. Today, we're going to be giving you a fantasy hockey preview for the big, bad Atlantic division. It's going to be another beefer. So let's get into it. And the, as as we did last week, I've got my boy Gug in here with me, the new regular co-host of the Rolling Lines podcast. What's going on, Gugsy? Is Gugsy okay? Gugsy's great. I love that. That's a cute name. I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> it feels it feels kind of like a hockey nickname in a, in a way. It's a, and it, and it kind of uh, Gugsy and Hutch. It, it has the same ring to it as as Binksy and Hutch that. did. It just feels right. There's that something about right. it that feels good. We should yeah. be a pair of New York cops. That's a good. That's a good name. Yeah, hundred percent. That is what it sounds like, isn't it? That's kind of the vibe that I was looking for uh, <laughs> when when I when I gave Binksy his nickname in the first place. So it just kind of carries the torch. It's the it's it, it, it's the whole Starsky and Hutch. It's it, it's it got is. the same the same vibe, right? That's why same you're getting vibe. that that feeling. I think. Yeah. 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 yeah no, for I sure. Like it. I love it. No, I'm excited How to you be here. Th thank you for uh, for bringing me back, you know, and, uh, you know, like, I'm excited for this week's uh, division preview. The Lactic Division is uh, always a good time to talk about. A lot of, a lot of interesting teams, a few up-and-coming teams that I think might surprise everyone. Um, yeah, it's going to be good. For sure. The parity in this division is probably probably as good as, as any, um, especially this year. It does seem like the, the, the teams at the bottom are kind of kind of rising a little bit. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so it should be fun to talk about. Before we get into it, I did want to talk about the fact that we do have an Apples and Genos fantasy hockey draft guide that is available for purchase on the apples and genos patreon so if you are interested in looking into that head over there uh we've worked extremely hard on this thing um it's uh oh, we've got all of our projections mine blake and nate's projections all combined into an aggregate a apples and genos projection that is the first time we've ever done this they are all in this guide um, we have a ton of strategy articles uh we have previews for every team um in the entire league and uh it's a lot of fun it's a, it's a it's a good uh solid guide to kick things off especially if you're if you're kind of jonesing for fantasy hockey content so uh yeah it, it's uh it's available for purchase on the patreon uh so definitely head over there and check it out there will be a link in the description uh and gugsy i did just want to uh just before we get into things uh, I know that I know that there's been a lot of tributes this week, but I did want to talk about uh, the passing of uh, Johnny and Matthew Goudreau. Um, it it uh, is just just an unbelievable tragedy. Uh, I just wanted to say that our our thoughts, uh, um, our hearts go out to to the family of both guys. I, I know that they're probably preparing uh, preparing funeral services. It's just it's just horrendous right now. Um, so I, I, it, it really, it, it hit me harder than I thought it would. Yeah, uh, I obviously like, uh, we had the, the day prior, uh, talked a lot about Johnny Gaudreau on our show last week. Um, it, we, we previewed the Columbus blue jackets. Uh, and later that night I was cutting, I was cutting clips for the YouTube uh, I separated all the teams into into their own videos uh, and and made some graphics. I had Johnny Gaudreau on the Columbus Blue Jackets graphic, uh, and as I was doing that, I was listening to uh, the What Chaos podcast where they had Sean Monahan on, and he was talking about how excited he was to play with jo his best friend Johnny Gaudreau again. And it was just like it was so bizarre. All of the Johnny Gaudreau content and conversation that I was consuming just the night before. Um, so it just was so jarring, like even that much more jarring. Um, yeah. And then just, just with all the circumstances surrounding uh, what happened, it was just so unbelievably tragic. So, so our hearts 
go out to the Gaudreau family. I don't know if you have anything to say, Gugsy. No, I, I, I remember I was actually at the fair with my family and, and, you know, my hockey chats were blowing up about this rumor and I'm just like, come on, man, let's, let's, let's not get into this. But, you know, when, when everyone's connected and you, you hear any sort of rumor, uh, it, you know, momentum takes effect. And unfortunately the next day you wake up and, you know, it was confirmed and it's, it's honestly one of the biggest sports tragedies I've, I've experienced in my life. Um, you know, the guy was so young and he just moved his family to, to Columbus. Um, no, it's, it's awful. And especially as a, as a dad myself, um, yeah, it's, it sucks. He's leaving behind some babies, uh, his wife, his family. It just sucks. And, uh, it's just a totally avoidable tragedy. The guy that hit him just, you know, didn't drink and drive, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a total tragedy and, uh, you know, rest in peace to Johnny. And I hope the Goudreau family have the strength to, to overcome this. Absolutely. There's not really a good way to segue from that, but we are going to try to to get into this Atlantic Division preview here. So we're gonna we're gonna kick things off. We'll go in al- alphabetical order uh, with the Boston Bruins. So Gugsy, why don't you kind of take us into to what they were able to do last season? Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> Boston. Uh, you know, I, I feel like every year people are like, "This is the year they're gonna suck." Last year they didn't have Patrice Bergeron, and a lot of people uh, kind of gave them a little bit of a fading, but. You know, they, they did pretty good. Second in the Atlantic is is pretty wicked uh, with no real 1C. Uh, 24th in Corsi 4 percentage, uh, 17th in uh, X, uh, Corsi 4, uh, goals 4 percentage, sorry. 22nd in, uh, sorry, what's the S? It's, uh, it's okay. It's okay, man. I, I kind of threw you under the bus with this. So, yeah, yeah. so 17th in expected goals 4 percentage and then 22nd in scoring chances 4 percentage. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, similar stats, very similar stats there. Um, but I so so what this what that says to me because I I feel like they kind of were a little bit overinflated this team. Like yeah. they maybe overachieved a little bit. And and part, also like another another factor is their PDO was extremely high. So their 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 5v5 save percentage uh, was third in the NHL with 918, obviously Jeremy Swayman and Linus Allmark, they, they kicked ass, uh, uh, last year. Uh, their shooting percentage was also fifth in the league at 10.35, uh, percent at even strength. That's like, uh, that's extremely high as well. So, so when both of those stats are really high, um, and their shot and chance generation stats are like bottom third in the league, uh, that usually means that there's probably going to be some sort of negative regression coming here. Um, they had the third highest PDO in the league, which is the combined five v five save percentage and shooting percentage. And Even then higher than the Canucks, damn. Uh, they were no, the Canucks were a little bit higher. <laughs> they were just. <laughs> I think the Canucks were first. Were first in yeah, that in that, that department. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> yeah, not quite, not quite, no. but. Uh, and then uh, their power play uh, was 14th in the league uh, at 22.2%. Um, under the hood, everything was very average. Um, so I, th- there's not really any reason for it to get better or worse uh, other than like a slight change in, in personnel. Uh, but, but yeah, Gugsy, like how are you feeling about the Boston Bruins going into this year? As far as fantasy is concerned, um, you know, I, 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 I'm excited for a certain uh, center that they just acquired that I was a big fan of uh, watching in the playoffs on the Canucks. Um, and we'll get into that. Um, and, you know, some they got they got a sleeper or two that, that I might be interested in. But, you know, every year I, I say, um, you know, they're going to suck this year and they don't suck. And I'm, I'm just wary of talking too much Yang right now. You know, I... I the Bruins like to break my heart. I'm from Vancouver. I'm a Canucks fan, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do a bit of reverse psychology here and assume they're gonna they're gonna be decent at least. Listen, man, I'm a Leafs fan, so I know <laughs> all about the Boston Bruins breaking my heart. Uh, obviously, with lower stakes, but it's happened a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Quant- You have quality. I have quantity. It's it's uh, <laughs> it's not a great situation. <laughs> I really thought the Leafs uh, were gonna win last uh, playoffs. Really did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a that was a 
That was a terrible series all around. Both teams <laughs> kind of stunk, honestly, overall. Uh, it was not not a fun one to watch. Uh, so key departures for the Bruins. Linus Allmark went out the door. Um, Jake DeBrusque went to Vancouver. So kind of a swap here for Elias Lindholm a little bit. Yep. Danton Heinen also went to Vancouver. Yeah, JVR yeah. still an, still a UFA. Um, so some fairly significant departures. And then in terms of additions, Elias Lindholm comes in. Obviously, that's their 1C now. Uh, Nikita yeah. Zadorov um, kind of sh- kind of helps out their the left side of their defense, which was a little bit weak last year. Uh, Eunice Corpusalo, um, he is, I mean, going to be their backup unless they aren't able to sign Jeremy Swayman before the season starts. And then he ends up being their starter which is scary uh if yeah, you're a Bruins fan and then <laughs> yeah and then Max Jones so what I don't know what do you think like does is this team better like I I, I feel like they've kind of subtracted from areas yeah. of strength and added yeah. to to areas of weakness and it almost feels like a wash to me yeah no I, I I'd say that's fair I I actually think um like I really do like again. I, I'm really excited for the the Lane home signing, but uh, yeah, the I, I totally agree with you. Um, Zadarov, especially, I, I think Zadarov is one of those signings that everyone is excited about. But then he's gonna play uh, a ton of regular season games, and I think he might be a a little too expensive for what they gave him. But no, I agree with you. The the goalie situation is what I'm really intrigued by. Taking away Ulmark, uh, giving the reins. Uh, to swim in uh, and him not being signed. I'm I'm watching that. I'm pretty I'm pretty interested in that right now. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's let's go to um, let's go to the goaltenders. So obviously we kind of we kind of talked about that. It was a pretty good segue. Uh, Jeremy Swayman. Uh, he started 43 starts last year. They've been pretty much an even tandem, Swayman and Allmark, for the last few years. Uh, had a 921 even strength save percentage. He's been one of the best goalies uh, in the league, um, at least uh, ga- like uh, in terms of per 60 stats uh, for goaltenders o- over the last couple of years. Uh, Eunice Corpusello, 49 starts for the Senators, 901 even strength save percentage. He really struggled last year. A bit of a perplexing move to bring him back. Brandon Bussey is an interesting one as well. That's another name uh, that's yep. in the mix. Uh, he's been really solid for Providence the last uh, couple of years. Um, and he seems to, he's a guy that people are saying is, is potentially ready uh, to play some NHL games. So uh, it'll be interesting to see, like, uh, if uh, there there have been some people that, that have talked about, like, oh, is Corpus Allo just going to get put on waivers or, or 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 something like that and get sent down to the minors and then they bring up Brandon Bussey to, to, to back up um, and give him this opportunity. But I don't know. What do you what do you see happening here, Gugsy? Yeah, I, I don't know. But I'm not too familiar with Bussey's game. Um Honestly, I think last year Corpusalo uh, kind of showed his his uh, his worst. Uh, the Sanders organization was a, a total shit show, and the players themselves admitted that the drama behind changing ownership did affect them. Uh, I, I do expect Corpusalo to rebound a bit, especially because I trust Boston's system and and the coaching staff uh, and the goalie coach much more than anything coming out of Ottawa. But um, yeah, I, I don't really feel like he'll get sent down. Uh, but hey, you never know. Bussy seems to be a pretty legit prospect here. All right, Gugsy, why don't you talk about some schedule quirks for the Boston Bruins going into next year in terms of fantasy? Yes, yeah, I'd for. Uh, 29th uh, for the uh, back-to-backs. They have 10 back-to-backs this season. 21 off nights, also tied for 29th. Um, their playoff schedule from weeks 22 to 24, if, if that's in your settings. Uh, they got 10 games and four off nights. And if your playoff settings start at week 23 and end at week 25, you're going to get 10 games and two off nights. So, yeah, the, the 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 weeks twenty three to twenty five. They've actually got it's one of the worst. Uh, it actually, it is tied for the worst schedule uh, over that stretch. So uh, they're they're not playing a ton of games late in the season. Um, so that is, I mean, that's that's definitely something to consider. I know we talked about it last week um, that I don't really think about about playoff schedule all that much when I'm drafting, uh, but that's definitely something that you will have to think about at some point in the season if you have got some Boston Bruins here. Um, and then uh, in terms of a power play one projection, I think it's pretty cut and dry uh, for the most part. Uh, I think it's good, pro- likely going to be Elias Lindholm. 
Brad Marchand, David Pasternak, Pavel Zaka, Charlie McAvoy. They got rid of a bit of depth up front. Uh, they've got, still got Morgan Geeky, who they they kind of mixed in there at times last year. Um, but this is this is the most likely five, uh, in my opinion. What, what do you have any objections to that, Gugsy? No. I agree. Um, I totally agree. The only one that might be questionable is Zaka. And yeah, what are they going to yeah. replace him with? Maybe Geeky, I guess, maybe Coil. But no, I think this is pretty solid. They're at least going to start out with this. Yeah, those would be the two that that I would I would think. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I think the I think the other four are pretty much locked in. Um, and then in terms of in terms of forward projections, why don't you talk a little bit about my forward projections for yeah. the Boston Bruins? What do you think, Gugsy? Yeah, okay, let's see here. Well, Elias Lindholm, you're getting him for 27 goals, 47 assists, uh, 74 points. Pretty not bad. Uh, Brad Marchand, uh, 28 goals, 44 assists, uh, 72 points. Pasternak, 53, a whopping 53 goals. That's why he's a first-rounder. 48 assists, 101 points with a whopping 381 shots. And uh, Charlie Coyle with 19 goals, 31 assists, and 50 points. Let's not forget about Pavel Zaka, 22 goals, 39 assists, 61 points. And lastly, Morgan Geeky at 16 goals, 23 assists, and 39 points. Are there any numbers here, Gugsy, that, that kind of come off the page as like, whoa, that's really high, or whoa, that's really low, or uh, I don't know, just a, just anything, that, anything that's surprising to you here? Yeah, you know... Um, Pavel Zaka, I, I guess I just don't like the guy for, for him to uh, <laughs> score. If he could score 20-plus goals, I, I think that's a that's that's pretty solid of him. Um, and Coyle not getting uh, power play one, although, you know, he was there up and down uh, when, when they were injured. Uh, for him to be a potential 20-goal scorer, that's, that's pretty intriguing. Uh, for So Coyle and Zaka, those guys as streamers would be pretty solid. Not sure about holding them for ch big chunks of the year, though. Yeah, Zach is a guy. So the reason I have him projected so high is because I see him getting consistent 5v5 time on the wing with David Pasternak uh, and probably Elias Lindholm as well. So that's that's a really nice situation. And then the power play time as well. Uh, I just think he's going to probably play uh, a good amount of minutes and won't have the defensive responsibility that he had last year playing center for most of the year. Uh, he did have a lot of success on the left wing the, pre the previous year. Um, so... Uh, that's why it's a little bit high. I, I, and honestly, um, Nate and Blake are in agreement for the most part on that. Like our projections all came out pretty similarly for Pavel Zaka. So, um, yeah, I, there's definitely some projections that I have that, uh, <laughs> that are either wildly like considerably higher or considerably lower than, than Nate and Blake. Uh, but I was that last night I was comparing, I was comparing our aggregate projections to Dom Lecision and a lot of them are pretty on par like with with yeah. uh with what what he he's talked about so so there's nothing that's 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 super crazy but there are yeah. there are some some guys that we're probably going to talk about on this episode where i'm like i i'm pretty bullish on them yeah but uh in terms of zach and coil i think we're all pretty much on the same page uh and then in terms of defense who do, uh why, why don't you talk about my projections on defense here yeah, you got Hampus Lindholm. Uh, you got him projected for eight goals, 26 assists, 34 points. And then you got Charlie McAvoy, 12 goals, 48 assists, 60 points with a, a nice 146 blocks and a beautiful 161 blocks. And as a, as a bangers guy, I love McAvoy just for not only the, the, the point upside, but those bangs are, are awesome. I love that. Yeah, I mean the the assists and the points for McAvoy there they would be career highs. I am pretty high on him this year. I I, I don't really see anyone challenging for his his power play time as as uh I mean there's yeah anyways he had a bit of a down year last year um but I I, I do see him bouncing back to a certain extent uh, offensively and then like you said yeah like his his bangs are are always always clutch um in terms of in terms of punts and sleepers, uh, I've got as as an ADP punt, I've got Brad Marchand. I think that he's going uh, relatively high. Uh, he's his ADP is sixty four point eight in Apples and Genos leagues, and his Yahoo ADP is sixty point four. Um, and then I have him for seventy two points. I, I I just think that in that range, you can probably get someone 
uh, a little yeah. bit better. Uh, and I also feel like he's just trending downward. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, um, red flags under the hood um, that yeah. that March kind of, is kind of trending in the wrong direction. Um, yeah. Obviously, uh, uh, there was a report that came out. Uh, earlier this week that he he had had three surgeries this off season he had oh, like a really? torn tendon yeah he had a torn wow. tendon in his groin and one in his elbow and like like it was all over the place that he'd been struggling with like a good chunk of the year so maybe that i, I mean i don't know maybe maybe there's a huge bounce back here for brad marchand but i just don't i don't really see it uh what what do you think what do you think about marchand there like is that do you think that's fairly accurate no, that's uh, you know what I I was wary regarding his ADP. What, what made me wary for the last uh, season as well was that double hip surgery because a lot of players don't come back uh, yeah. even close to one hundred percent after that. And he actually did much better than I thought coming back from double hip surgery. But totally. hearing you say he has even more problems this off season, now I'm I'm even much more turned off. That's uh, you know he's getting high, uh, he's getting up there in age. Boston has gotten a lot of uh, playoff games with Marchand on their lineup over the years. That's extra kilometers. Yeah, I, I agree. I think you can get a lot more, a, a higher floor of a player at the ADP in which uh, Marchand is going. I just, I'm just questionable about Marchand's floor for this upcoming season. The other thing, the other factor for me is they seem pretty hellbent. John Montgomery, at least, seems pretty hellbent on separating Marchand and Pasternak 5v5 um just to kind of spread the wealth a little bit and the depth at, up front on boston is just not as strong this year uh, like you're yeah. probably gonna have morgan geeky on the right side which I, I mean i have him as a potential sleeper just because there is like some contingent upside there but i i, I mean i just don't i mean even his ceiling is probably like it, he's still a streamer level player um, and then uh, Charlie Coyle uh, obviously had a great year last year, but there were a lot of uh, a lot of redlining under underlying stats there. So I, I see him kind of kind of coming back down to earth too. So the the uh, environment for Marchand five v five is just not what it used to be. So so that's a that's another another factor there for me. Uh, and then my top three targets here, uh, we've got Elias Lindholm, Charlie McAvoy, Pavel Zaka. Lindholm, for me, uh, is getting drafted pretty late uh, for, yeah. for what I think he's going to be able to do. His Apples and Geno's ADP is 140. His Yahoo ADP is 115. And and I I like him in that range uh, to, to potentially provide some, some 70 point value uh, from the center position uh, with a little bit of peripherals here and there too. Um, and then uh, Charlie McAvoy, uh, that's another guy. I, I mean, I, I just see his ceiling being high across the board um, and from from the range that he's going. Yahoo ADP is 73, Apples and Geno's 69, which is very nice. Um, I, I, I just think that uh, I, I think that he could return you some really nice value. And then obviously Pavel Zaka, uh, his, uh, he's not being drafted in Yahoo leagues and in Apples and Geno's leagues. He's at 233.9. Um, so if he, if he returns 61 points, like 61 points is, is at the range in a, in a regular league where you could almost roster him for the entire year. Um, so if he does hit that level, um, that's incredible value for someone that you almost don't even need to draft. Um, yeah. Do you have, are, are there any other names here that you'd be targeting, Gugsy? No, I like all that. Um, uh, Lindholm, I agree, absolutely. That's that's pure value compared to his his Yahoo ADP. I think people are just pissed off at him from last year's performance, especially Canucks fans, because uh, if you remember the last little bit of the regular season, he kind of stunk it up. So, you yeah. know, uh, that, that means value for this draft season. I, I think he's going to be awesome. And I, I agree with uh, your points on McAvoy and Zaka completely. All right, let's move on to the Buffalo Sabres. They're one of the more exciting teams uh, in the NHL, uh, sort of. I mean, one of one of the most perennially underachieving regular season teams. That is, uh, we were we've been very excited about them every single year uh, in terms of fantasy, and then somehow they continuously disappoint. So last year they were sixth in the Atlantic. 15th in Corsi 4 percentage at 5v5, 22nd in the league in expected goals 4 percentage, and 20th in scoring chances 4 percentage at even strength. 
Their 5v5 save percentage was 15th in the league uh, with 906. They were pretty average there, so uh, it's not as if their goaltending was letting them down. UPL had a had a great season last year, kind of as their volume starter. Uh, and then their shooting percentage, 18th in the league at 9.42% at 5v5. That was, I mean, pretty average. Like, uh, uh, that that just shows i don't know it could be higher it could be lower but it's not it's not something i'm not they're they weren't incredibly unlucky or lucky uh at 5v5 they're they're just not generating a ton of high danger chances uh that yeah. that's that's what i see from these numbers here uh their power play last year was awful uh, after being a, a really exciting, really high-powered power play the year before, it was tied for 28th in the league at 16.6% conversion. Uh, their shot and chance generation numbers on the power play were terrible. They were among the worst in the league, which is just wild. Obviously, like the year before, their percentages were pretty high. They were converting at a higher rate, and there was some negative regression coming. But this was crazy. Like this was. Yep. This was a very significant, a very significant drop off, and that's a big reason why why they weren't able to get into the playoffs. So um, now, part of that, and and you can you can elaborate on this too, uh, Gugsy, but I I feel like part of that was it it was a bit of a volatile power play in terms of um, the way it was deployed. It, it seems like Don Granado was kind of just throwing whoever out there at all times. Jeff Skinner got pulled off of it for a while um dylan cousins was off of it for a while it, it was just kind of like it's hard to get into a groove when your power plays uh getting mixed around like that um so what do, what do you think about that like like is that i i imagine that's a pretty major factor um and with lindy ruff coming in i i think there there's it's probably going to be a little more consistent yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, Don Granado, uh, for whatever reason, kind of abandoned uh, the prior, the year prior to last year's uh, structure for something more defense oriented, and and you really saw the results of that because their offense completely dried up. Um, Tage Thompson, I think, just wasn't used to his full potential, and I I expect a big uh, bounce back this year from not only Tage but uh, the the team as a whole. I don't know if they'll they'll get back to their twenty two twenty three efficiency that was a little off the chart. But I, I definitely think uh, Lindy Ruff is going to make them perform better than they performed last year. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Um, Lindy Ruff, he's got his warts as, as coach, and and you could be as uh, frustrated as you want. I know Buffalo Sabres fans aren't super stoked about about kind of running it back with Lindy Ruff, bringing him back after uh, them not being incredibly happy with him uh, in in the end uh, in Buffalo. Um, but it, it, yeah, I guess it does kind of feel like a vibes move, but it, he's got something <laughs> left in the tank. I don't, I don't know if it's like, they've got to get to the playoffs. Like his biggest yeah. issue is not being able to get his teams over the hump in the playoffs. Um, but I mean, they just got to get there. Right. Totally. Okay. In terms of key departures, we've got Jeff Skinner out the door, bought out. He's gone. He went to Edmonton, uh, Victor Olofsson. He's gone. He went to, I believe, uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. Okay. Eric Comrie, gone back to Winnipeg. Matt Savoy, out the door to Edmonton as well. Uh, in terms of guys brought in, nothing really uh, that'll move the needle in terms of fantasy. Jason Zucker might be a streamer. Beck Malenston, uh, you you can pick him up for some bangs. He's a big banger um, in, in Bangers Cats Leagues. He's, he was, I streamed him quite a bit last year, actually, in Bangers yeah. Cats Leagues. Ryan McLeod, uh, he's kind of more of a defensive-minded center, uh, but actually, like, it's probably a pretty good fit in Buffalo, but but just not something someone that's going to bring you a lot of fantasy value. And then James Reimer as a third goalie option um, with Devin Levi and UPL. What do you what do you think uh, about the state of the Buffalo Sabers here? Are they better? Are they worse? Are they the same? You know, I. That, it's it's tough to say because their departures, honestly, uh, the the biggest one is obviously Jeff Skinner, but every coach hates Jeff Skinner, so um, yeah, <laughs> I'm 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 actually excited for Zucker. Uh, I think Zucker might bring a little bit more grit to the the team overall, and and Melenstein as well. I loved Melenstein last year. He was constantly added and dropped every here and there in my Bangers Cats leagues, and and yeah, the team's definitely tougher to play against. Um, 
but I, I feel like they're going to rely on their core a lot more than any of these uh, additions and departures uh, have, have have given. Jeff Skinner was a big part in that big season two years ago, but yeah, he's coaches hate him, so... Yeah, it seems that way. It's uh, it's kind of bizarre. Uh, I guess he he just doesn't play a lot of defense. But in in fantasy, we love Jeff Skinner because uh, defense doesn't really matter. Um, and then goaltending, UPL had fifty one starts last year. That is not what we projected at the start of the year. But that is why you don't draft goalies early, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of Dev Devin Levi uh, drafters were wildly disappointed. Uh, yeah, so 51 starts for UPL with a 915 even strength save percentage. Devin Levi, 21 starts. He had a 913 even strength save percentage. Played a lot of the season in the minors, uh, but uh, still performed fairly well in small sample size. And then you've got James Reimer as well. He struggled uh, a bit in Detroit last year, but he is another option. So it'll be interesting to see what they do in terms of uh, deploying their backup whether whether they keep levi in the minors or uh they carry three goalies um but it does seem like upl is as close to a volume starter as you could get because that is the way that they played him last year what do you, what do you think about that no i totally agree i think uh upl has won the net um getting him off the wire in every league you could have last year that's that's the definition of zero g he absolutely killed it for you know, he, he, he barely had a, a flub of a, of a game. He did have them here and there, but uh, I think he proved himself as the, the starter for this team. Yeah, for sure. All right, why don't you talk to us about schedule quirks uh, for the Buffalo Sabres? Yeah, here we go. So this one's good. Uh, 13 back-to-backs, that's tied for 11th. And you got 27 off nights, that's tied for 19th in the league. Uh, here's where the fun part where the fun part begins. Uh for playoff weeks 22 to 24, they have 11 games, and that's tied for four, uh, first in the league with four off nights. Pretty good. And uh, then we got, for those of you in weeks 23 to 25 for your playoffs, 13 games, still tied for first, and three off nights. So that alone, even if you don't pay much attention to uh, playoff schedules this time of year, I, I think it should affect how you uh, draft players like Tage and Alex Tuck. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I, I think that uh, so not a ton of off nights in the playoffs in the in the playoff weeks, but a ton of games like yeah. uh, they they're saving a lot of their games to till the end. And that is that is valuable uh, depending on who's on the rest of your roster. But yeah, like you said, guys like Tage, guys like Alex Tuck, um, Dylan Cousins, maybe even JJ Paterka. Um, oh, yeah. uh, that could be a guy that you're, you're rostering for the whole season. The guys that are going to get in your lineup anyways, that, that's going to be pretty valuable. So you're probably going to be trading for these guys, um, uh, trading guys that you, you may have that have a weaker, uh, playoff schedule. You're going to probably be, be dealing them for these, for these, uh, big name Buffalo Sabres players. Uh, oh. I would imagine. Um, and then in terms of power play, uh, we talked about loading up the top power play. This is kind of how I see it rolling out. Uh, I've got Tage Thompson, Alex Tuck, JJ Paterka, Dylan Cousins, Rasmus Dahlin. Do you have any objections here, Gugsy? No, I, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, I think uh, the freshest face is Paterka, and you know the the last half of uh, the previous season, he's proven that he can play. And uh, I think a lot of his fantasy yeah. managers were quite happy with how he how he did last year, and I'm very excited to draft him at his at his ADP. Yeah, for sure. I I am as well. I'm really high on JJ Paterka, and we'll we'll get into that right now. Let, these are my forward projections. You can see them on the screen on the YouTube. Why don't you kind of walk us through them here, Gugsy? There you go. So Tage Thompson, he's coming back with uh, 42 goals, 39 assists for a combined 81 points, and a nice 299 shots. Then we got our boy JJ Paterka. His name is like Jim John Paterka, John Jason Paterka. So. He's, yeah, awesome. <laughs> uh, we got 28 goals for Paterka, 40 assists, 68 points, and then Alex Tuck, 30 goals, 43 assists, uh, 73 points, and Dylan Cousins is coming in with 29 goals, 38 assists, 67 points. The newbie Jason Zucker, you have projected for 23 goals, 15 assists, 38 points, and 112 hits. Uh, Jack Quinn. Uh, Big prospect, 24 goals, 30 assists, 54 points, and Zach Benson, 
coming in with 16 goals, 25 assists, and 41 points. Yeah, man, I'm really high on the Sabres across the board. Uh, I, I don't know if there's any names that really pop out to you. When you're, just, when you're saying John Jason Paterka, all I could think of is like, I wish his name was J. Jonah Jameson Paterka. Uh, that's that, <laughs> I'm like picturing him with a cigar in his mouth and a mustache. And uh, but uh, I don't know. There's something. There's something there. We'll have to. We'll have to workshop with Blake on, on something yeah, for JJ definitely. Paterka. Uh, but uh, um, are there any names that kind of pop out to you? I think my my projections are are probably are a little bit higher uh, on most guys here than than uh, I think the other two guys um, have been. Yeah, you're excited for uh, Jack Quinn, and I could see why. I mean, he's he's a, a sick prospect. Uh, 24 goals, uh, I'd, I'd be pretty stoked if he could achieve that. Do you think he could even threaten for a, a power play one spot if he's going in that direction? Certainly. I think that yeah. um, the Paterka and the Cousins spot on the power play, I do think that it's relatively solidified. But that is definitely the gut, the uh, the fifth guy that like if any of those guys gets hurt or if any of them aren't really producing, or if they just need to change things up, like he's the guy that's going to get on that power play, I think. So um, there's definitely some contingent upside there for for Jack Quinn. Um, obviously, all those numbers will be career highs. He struggled with injuries. Like he he had a, he missed uh, the first chunk of the season last year. But um, there's a lot of things that he's done under the hood that look really nice. And he's he's got a ton of pedigree, and uh, he's really highly touted. Uh, he just hasn't been able to kind of um get the opportunity um and 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 stick in the lineup in terms of just being healthy so so yeah, if he gets if he has a full yeah, yeah yeah exactly so so i am I'm, I'm curious to see what he can do there uh another another few points here i think tage thompson i'm a little higher on him than the other two guys obviously like he's been nate's boy for years um but i just see him bouncing back i, I he had an injury um it, it and uh, that was a big part of why uh, his his production dipped so much. Uh, so I don't I don't see him getting quite back up to to his production that he had two years ago. But um, I, I I think point per game is is relatively reasonable for him. Um, and uh, and then Paterka, I I'm just I couldn't be higher uh, on him. He's really exciting for me. I think he's going to get all the opportunity. I think with Jeff Skinner gone, he's pretty much locked in on that top line um and yeah i i have him for 68 points uh which would be a career high for him obviously he's only been in the league for a couple seasons but but uh yeah i'm I, and uh dylan cousins is another guy i'm a little higher on than the other two guys I, I i think that he's he's gonna bounce back here uh and uh he's gonna have jack quinn on his wing as well so uh lots to be excited about here what about the defense uh why don't you walk uh, everybody through my projections on D for the Sabres because there are a couple of nice fantasy options here. Yeah. So we got my BC boy Bowen Byram with 11 goals, 36 assists, and 47 points. He's a banger stud. He's going to get you 163 hits and 126 blocks. Then we got another bangers beast in Rasmus Dahlin, 17 goals, 55 assists, 72, 72 points with 230 shots, 163 hits, and 146 blocks. Just a category monster. And then we got Owen Power with 7 goals, 27 assists, and 34 points, uh, 124 blocks with Owen Power. Yeah, I, I so I'm obviously very excited for Dahlin. Uh, super high on him. I know Nate and Blake are as well. Um, I think he's probably going to be the third defenseman off the board in fantasy leagues, and I think that's that is where he should be, uh, right in the second round there. Uh, yeah. Bowen Byram, I'm pretty high on him. I have him for a career high in assists, at least a career high in uh, pace for assists. Um, he's a really really high efficiency converter. I think he's going to get a ton of opportunity. Um, he's likely going to play on the top pair with Darlene on the right side, which is exciting. So I think he's going to get a lot of ice time, get some power play two time. Uh, and then uh, Owen Power. Owen Power is a guy that I just am not excited about in fantasy. Like, I think he's probably a better, uh, a better real life defenseman than he is a fantasy defenseman. So uh, I don't know. What are your thoughts there on Power? Like, do, do you see him kind of like exploding in some way shape or form or or is this kind of what we're going to expect from him 
Yeah, no, I'm I'm not. Even introducing him, I had no energy for him. I don't really, I don't really, uh, I, at most, he's a watch list player for me. I remember last year yeah. he was getting taken, like, what was it, like, within the top 10 rounds, which was insane to me, because, yeah. you know, it's Dahlin's spot, right? I, no, I, um, I'm i much more interested in Dahlin and Byram than, than I'll ever be interested in power. I think if Dahlin's injured, that power play spot's probably going to Byram. What do you think there? Yeah, it's interesting because in the past it's it has been they have leaned Owen Power, but to, now that they have Bowen Byram in the fold, they they did play him, and obviously the coaching staff is different this year, so hard to predict. Uh, yeah. But they did play Bowen Byram uh, with Dalene on the top power play last year uh, uh, when he first came into the fold. So yeah. um, I don't know. I I do think that that's a possibility, but I wouldn't rule out Power as being the the the. Uh, the guy that they they would put in uh, in Darlene's absence. It's it's a uh, it's a weird one there. I think Byram should be the guy. Um, I agree, yeah. but he's never been the guy. Unfortunately, he's always been pushed down the depth chart, and that's why um, I was hoping that he would go to a team where uh, he would have a little bit more opportunity. But I I do think there's more opportunity here than Colorado. Um, yeah, but. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I am still, regardless, excited about Bo and Byram going into yeah. this year, as I was last year. Um, and my top three targets, I've got Tage Thompson. Um, so in terms of ADP, he's going at 40.4 in Apples and Geno's leagues and 47.3 in Yahoo leagues. I think he could provide some immense value there. Um, uh so like that's what that's in the fourth round uh, for Tage Thompson last year he was back into the first early second um, and I think he does enough peripherally um, and then with with a potentially close to a point per game pace with uh, over 40 goals like I I, I think that Thompson uh, could return you some nice value even getting him in the fourth round. Um, Alex Tuck is is my next guy um, in Yahoo leagues. This is this is the big reason he's here in Yahoo leagues. He's going at one sixteen point one, which is just way too low for Alex Tuck, especially since he's a right winger, which is a position of scarcity. Um, I just think he's he's going to have a huge bounce back this year. And then Dylan Cousins is is my third guy. Uh, I've got him for sixty seven points. And in Yahoo leagues, he's going at one seventy three. In Apples and Geno's leagues, one eighty six. So just incredibly low, uh, and I I just feel like he's gonna smash, uh, the like his his draft position there. Like he's gonna he's gonna provide you great value if you get him that late. Uh, I, I I'd be super excited to be drafting Dylan Cousins that late in the draft, especially uh, with center right wing eligibility, which is what he is currently uh in at least in fan tracks i'm not sure about uh, about yahoo he may just be be center only but um is there anyone else that you want to touch on here obviously i talked about paterka i think he's yeah. he's a good option too but yeah. what do you think no i think we i think we covered uh the guys i wanted to talk about um uh you know with, uh, along with thompson uh as to what I said uh, previously, the dude, like, what did he step on a puck and, like, broke his foot or something and uh, was dealing with injuries, nagging injuries all year. So, you know, that's why people are pissed. That's why we're getting him out of value. So, and especially with Buffalo having a good playoff schedule, I'd, I would I would reach for him a little bit. Uh, I'd, I don't want any of my opponents to, to take Tage Thompson away from me. Yeah, 100%. Uh, that those are the situations that you look for. There's a lot of guys in Buffalo here that had down years last year that I think are going to bounce back. And those are the guys that you want to be targeting in leagues because their ADPs are naturally going to drop because people's opinions of them have decreased. Um, but I just see them all bouncing back in a really nice way. All right. Let's talk about the Detroit Red Wings uh, they were fifth in the Atlantic last year. They battled it out until the end for a playoff spot. Uh, they're even strength numbers, though. Not very nice. Uh, 28th in Corsi 4 percentage, 26th in expected goals 4 percentage, 29th in scoring chances 4 percentage at even strength. Uh, their 5v5 save percentage, 25th in the league at 901. Uh, as a team so goaltending was pretty bad as well and that's with Alex Lyon having a really nice stretch for a while uh, as their third goaltender uh, and then their shooting percentage this is why they were uh, they were even in 
the mix for the playoffs. So their shooting percentage was third in the league at 5v5 at 10.81%. Uh, and their power play percentage was 23.1% in terms of conversion. That was ninth in the league. So really solid power play as well. So, I mean, uh, I'm not super excited about the Detroit Red Wings. No. I'm going to be completely honest here. Like, I, I, I see them at 5v5 really, uh, really negatively regressing here. Their power play does seem fairly sustainable, and I do think that it's going. We'll we'll get into it in a bit, but I do think it's going to be more of a. They're going to lean more towards power play one, just because they've lost a lot of depth. Um, but yeah, I mean, this just screams negative regression, does it not? <laughs> yeah, you know, um, red the Red Wings kind of remind me of a bizarro version of the Bruins. With the Bruins, it's like these guys are going to suck this mm-hmm. year, but then they end up being good. And and with the Red Wings, everyone's like, this is the year they're going to be good, and then they end up sucking. So I just find that yeah, cute. yeah, totally, yeah. They they are they are the anti Boston Bruins for sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, let's let's talk about key departures. So a lot of departures here. Uh, and a lot of guys that had fantasy value. So we've got Daniel Sprong out to Vancouver. Perron went to the Senators. Shane Gossespierre, their power play one quarterback, he went to Carolina. James Reimer, we talked about, went to Buffalo. Robbie Fabry dealt to the Anaheim Ducks. And then in terms of key additions, we've got Vladimir Tarasenko. Uh, that's a pretty significant one there. Um, Eric Gustafson on the back end and Cam Talbot in goal. Uh, yeah, I mean, this team has considerably less depth, does it not? Yeah, it does. I, yeah, um, I don't know. It, it, it feels like they, they got worse, but that I, I feel weird saying that cause they're already bad, you know? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I don't know yeah, no, it's, it, it's a weird one here. I, I, Tarasenko, uh, I think is not the Tarasenko that he used to be. Um, I don't think you can really expect him to get any more than 50, 55 points. Um, And he's probably not going to get a sniff of the power play, honestly, just because they have, uh, they have a bunch of core guys there already. Um, Eric Gustafson. uh, That's a guy that I see getting power play one time uh, just because why else do you get Eric Gustafson? Uh, Especially when you've been so itchy uh, uh, about, putting Mo Sider on the top power play. Like they seem not really excited about that. They had Shane Gosses bear playing most of the power play minutes last year. Um, and then Cam Talbot's a weird one as well. Uh, when you've got Alex Lyon and Billy Huso, who's uh, apparently healthy. So let, yeah, let's get into the goaltenders. Cause this is a weird one. They've got three guys. They also signed Jack Campbell. Uh, so really oh, if, wow. if you're factoring <laughs> him in, uh, that's four, that's four guys. Um, but I think Campbell is probably going to be rehabbing his career a little bit in the minors this year. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got Cam Talbot, who had 52 starts in LA last year with a 913 even strength save percentage. Pretty solid year for Talbot. Alex Lyon, 43 starts last year uh, after starting the year as the third goaltender in Detroit. He had a 911 even strength save percentage. And then Billy Huso, who was just marred with injuries last year, uh, was their starter. But we don't really know what his situation is right now. He's got 18 yeah. starts. He had 18 starts with a 903 even strength save percentage. So really struggled in the time that he played as well. What do we make of this? Like, what's going to happen here? Because they've got they do have three healthy goaltenders now that are on NHL contracts. Like, what what do we what are they going to do here, Gugsy? Yeah, it looks like a three headed monster for sure. Um, it. I don't know. I, I, I feel like they're not going to have the same patience for Huso as they had uh, previously. I think uh, the lion's share of the net is going to Lion <laughs> and uh, Talbot. Uh, but, you know, Talbot's getting up there in age. And last year he had a, a King's Trap defense in front of him. So uh, I could expect him to, to have some negative regression because, you know, the Red Wings defense is not how the, the King's defense plays. Um, I, I feel like Lion is going to end up with the, the 1A situation there how do you how do you feel about that yeah i mean he's he's definitely i feel like he's earned it yeah uh last yeah. year um he he had a really strong stretch for them uh and as as we saw which just a really poor environment in front of him uh he he really outperformed outperformed that at times um 
yeah, man, this is this is a weird one. I fully expected them to deal somebody at some point in the offseason, and it may still happen. I think that uh, a lot of times you get you get all the guys into camp, and then you get them into preseason games, and then the odd man out, you try and deal, or you put them on waivers. So I, I think that's probably going to be the situation that happens here, just because that's a lot of money to put into three guys. Um, but uh, Vili Huso, um, that's a guy that I have my eye on. Um, as a guy that, I mean, is not going to get drafted just because he's yeah. been completely forgotten about. And by all accounts, it sounds like he's healthy and ready to go for training camp. Like my thought was if he is, if he's going to be like an LTIR candidate, that's why you bring in Cam Talbot and Jack Campbell. And then you have Alex Lyon as your one a, um, because he earned it last year. But now that now that I'm hearing that Huso is healthy, I'm just not really sure. I'm not really sure what they do here. So yeah. I'm not drafting Detroit goalies until no. <laughs> I kind of see what uh, I see something from training camp, or at least get yeah. some indication of what they're going to do. Because this is the most confusing goaltending situation in the league, easily. Yeah. I, I got. I, I'm not really sure what the the Yzer plan is anymore. I know everyone has no. said, you know, just trust the process. But uh, all I gotta say is, yikes! What's going on, man? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it's a little sketchy. I think. I think that uh, this is gonna be one of those situations where Iserman is. Uh, his name brand is gonna get him a little bit further than his actual performance uh, uh, in the front office. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, I, well, we don't have to digress about that. But all right, let's let's talk about scheduling quirks here. Uh, what it, what it, what do you got for the Detroit Red Wings here? All right, we got eleven back to backs. That's tied for twenty six in the league. They they have thirty off nights. That's tied for fifteenth. Uh, weeks twenty two to twenty fourth playoff schedule. They're gonna have nine games with three off nights. And weeks 23 to 25 playoff schedule, they'll have 13 games with seven off nights. Mm-hmm. So, so they're 24 to 22 to 24 playoff schedule. That's one of the worst in the league, the nine games with three off nights. But weeks 23 to 25 is the best schedule in the NHL. So if that's when your playoff weeks are, Detroit Red Wings are bangers, my friend. Yeah. They're, they're going to be huge. Uh, seven off nights is crazy. So... And I mean, if, uh, if they're in the mix for the playoffs this year, I mean, they're certainly not going to like comfortably be in a playoff spot at that point in the season, but if they're even in the mix, you're probably going to be playing all your big guys. So yeah. you don't have to worry about rest, rest days, um, at the end of the year there. So, um, yeah, I, I think that, uh, that's definitely something to, to keep in mind, uh, about the Detroit uh, Red Wings. Uh, totally. You, what were you going to say? Uh, r real quick, um, with the week's 23 to 25 playoff schedule, uh, there is that risk of that final week having stars being set. But uh, with the Red Wings, you know, they're they're expected to at best be a bubble team. So they're, you know, they got to play their guys. Uh, just like last year, they barely missed. They got to play their guys. Yeah. So I know a lot of uh, uh, teams on that 25th week, uh, that final week of the season will be sitting their stars if they're already locked in. But uh, yeah, that's just another thing to keep in mind for that fantastic playoff schedule. Absolutely. Uh, and then in terms of power play projection, uh, they kind of played two power plays. Uh, they, they split them up last year um, and, and played them fairly evenly, but they've lost so much depth. They lost, like, as we talked about, Daniel Sprong was a power play guy. David Perron was, uh, Robbie Fabry was, and they didn't really replace them with anybody other than maybe Tarasenko, but not enough. There, there, there's not enough offensive depth on this team to be able to, to effectively split up a power play, uh, unless you're putting like Michael Rasmussen and Andrew Kopp on these units. Uh, and that's just not a good look. Uh, so I see them playing a top unit, uh, and, that unit looks like Dylan Larkin, Patrick Kane, Alex DeBrinkett, Lucas Raymond, and Eric Gustafson. A uh, little bit of controversy there, but I, I don't think based on previous years with the uh, cider battling it out for minutes with uh, various power play specialists, 
um that's that's probably a huge surprise for anybody although this is this will be the, probably the, this will be i believe the first time that gustafson uh could potentially f- like quarterback a power play full time um do you have any objections here what are your thoughts no, I, I agree. I, I just wanted your quick opinion on Gustafson. Would you rather Gustafson or they have kept Shane Gostaspair? Who do you think would have given more value to that power play? I, I think Gostaspair Gostas Bear has shown uh, that he he can produce um, a lot more. And he's he's just a, overall a better fantasy asset just because I think he plays a little bit. Like, he plays a little bit more 5v5. He converts a little bit better. Uh, Gustafson, though, is, is a really solid, uh, underrated guy. Um, but he is, he's going to be one of those guys like a Tony D'Angelo that plays not a lot of five V five minutes and then, uh, and then gets the power play time. So, so yeah. that, that's what he is. Uh, that's what we expect, but he has shown that when he gets the opportunity, he can produce. So, um, so in that way, I am relatively excited about, about Gustafson, but, um, I mean, once we get into the projections, you'll see that like I, the needle doesn't move a ton. Uh, with him on the power play uh, in terms of his overall production. Uh, but let's look at the forward, my forward projections here. Uh, why don't you walk us through that, Gugsy? All right, we got Dylan Larkin. He's uh, projected for 36 goals, 50 assists, 86 points. And then Lucas Raymond, expecting a big year from him for 24 goals, 50 assists, 74 points. Alex Debrinkat, he's going to get 36 goals, 38 assists, 74 points. JT Comfer, he's still on this team. 15 goals, 30 assists, 45 points. And the newbie, Vladimir Tarasenko, he'll get to 22 goals, 31 assists, 53 points. And Patrick Kane, 31 goals, 47 assists, and 78 points. I love I love it. JT Comfer, he's there. <laughs> he's still there. He exists <laughs> because that's pretty much what he is. He just he yeah. plays a ton of minutes, a lot of cardio, but you know, lucks into well not doesn't luck into some coins some points. Like he's just he he uh he he gets this this opportunity at second line center everywhere he goes and yeah. and uh um he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm just happy to be here." But yeah. uh yeah, I mean, uh, so are are there any ones that that kind of where your eyes are like, whoa, what what's going on here? No, you know, um, I see uh, you got Debrinkat uh, going uh, close to, to 40 goals. And, and you know, I, I, I could totally see that. Um, this is another guy that I'm, I'm eyeing on all of my drafts because, again, he pissed everybody off last year. Uh, yeah. And this is a guy who could potentially get you 40 goals throughout the season. If uh, if the market thinks he's worth uh, nothing, but you see you know a f- potential forty goal score, then you might want to reach for him relative to his ADP, which is is pretty damn low. Yeah. So so in Yahoo, he's at uh, ninety one point one, which is probably the lowest we've seen him in quite a few years. Like since he yeah. was probably like breaking out into the league, essentially. And then in Apples and Genos, uh, it's around sixty six. Um, so even still pretty low for, for to bring it, um, at, compared to, to where he's been picked historically. Um, but he's had a couple of down years. I, I do see, I, I think the big factor here is, um, the what and why I have him projected so high is, is the power play situation. Uh, he w- was often the odd man out, not playing with Larkin, uh, not playing with the big boys uh, on when on whatever power play unit he ended up with, and uh, and I think that hurt his production last year. So I think if they load up the top power play, his minutes will increase, uh, and the quality of of line mates will will improve as well. Lucas Raymond, I do have him for a career high in points, uh, but I have him for a wild uh, negative regression in terms of goals. Um, yeah, uh, and again. I'm not really incredibly high on Lucas Raymond. Uh, I, I just have him playing on a really nice power play where he gets involved in the offense a, a decent amount. Um, and that's why I see him getting more assists and, and, and points in in total uh, than he's had before. But yeah, his goal totals are coming way back. He shot like a 19.4 shooting percentage last year. That's just not... That's just not the guy that he is. And he doesn't produce a lot individually under the hood either. Um, but, I mean, he's still a player. He's still a guy that, that uh, uh, well, he's a guy that I think people are probably higher on than they should be. But, I mean, he's 
he's just a guy that's not going to end up on my fantasy team. I guess that's the that's the bottom line here, uh, yeah, for the most completely. part. Completely, yeah. He's always a guy that um, I just never have on my team unless he's gotten a, a total cold streak and Detroit has like a good schedule and I see him on the wire or something. I I'm probably not going to draft him, but uh, yeah, I, I agree with that projection. Yeah, someone always wants it more than me, that's yep. for sure. Uh, uh, let's get into the defense. Uh, so these are the two guys that I mentioned prior. Uh, why don't you walk the people through uh, my projections on them? Moritz Sider, seven goals, 33 assists, 40 points with 195 hits and 191 blocks. He's like a Charlie McAvoy light. Uh, and then you got Eric Gustafson. He's going to get you seven goals, 34 assists with 41 points. Yeah, so um, as you can see, I have them projected for very similar production in terms of points. Uh, and that's without Mo Sider getting a lot of power play time. So Eric Gustafson, I I just think that uh, outside of that power play time, I don't think there's really a ton of value there. Uh, so I'm probably not going to be drafting him incredibly high. Uh, but no. there is some, some upside uh, more. That, like, I think there is uh opportunity for him to to smash that that projection like there there it's yeah. possible um yeah. he's had some really hot stretches in his career he scored over 60 points once in his career it was a long time ago uh in chicago but it has happened um and mo cider um just brings so much peripherally so it, he's probably the guy to bank on regardless and he produces enough without the power play time uh in terms of offense that I mean, there's there's not a huge amount of difference between these two. Almost identical offensive stats, actually. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, uh, my punt, I, I, I talked about it. Lucas Raymond, I'm not super high on the guy. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think that he gets he's going to be drafted higher than I want him. And then uh, my sleeper is Gustafson. Like, his, he's not getting drafted in Yahoo Leagues, and... Uh, his apples and Geno's ADP is 205. I think I'm pretty happy uh, if I have a defense uh, spot open at the end of my draft, picking Eric Gustafson, because I think there is potential for him to to outperform. Uh, I mean, like getting drafted with your last pick of the draft, essentially. So, um, uh, any any comments on the on the defense here? No, I, I on that Gustafson point to get a, a power play one defenseman as your last last pick, that is just awesome. That's the kind of ceiling that you that you want to shoot for. His his floor, you know, might be pretty low, but his ceiling is pretty high, especially if you're getting him for free. So you can't lose with that. Keep him on your team, yeah. give him give him a bit of a leash and see where it goes. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Let's um uh let's get into the top three targets my top three targets are patrick kane uh eric gustafson as i mentioned as my sleeper and alex de we mentioned uh de being drafted lower than uh than he has been previously that's why i have him here gustafson i we just talked about but patrick kane um I have him almost for point per game, and his Yahoo ADP is 120, Apples and Geno's ADP 92.4, and he's a right winger, which is a position of scarcity. I think that uh, there's some real opportunity to get some awesome value for Patrick Kane here, so that's why he's my number one target. Uh, is there anyone else that you are targeting here, buddy? Uh, let me just see here. No, that, that, that covers it. Uh, a Larkin, I just want to say, uh, if you're in a face-offs league, this guy is just beautiful in, in every sense of the word. Uh, not only is he going to get you points, but he's a face-off monster. He, he's like a Bo Horvat, but in a red jersey. So uh, definitely, definitely uh, make sure you get Larkin if you're in a face-offs league. Yeah, I do want to give Larkin some love as well. Like, I do think that that he could return you some great value too. Like, he's going to be... Like, I have him projected for over a point per game. Uh, I think he's the best fantasy player on this team. Uh, his yeah. Yahoo ADP is 86. Uh, Apples and Geno's 68.5. Um, yeah. So, uh, I think there is there is potential for uh, some value there for for Dylan Larkin. So, some, some nice... Nice fantasy assets on this team. Uh, as a unit, though, not not super stoked uh, about yeah. these about uh, the Detroit Red Wings. That's for sure. Let's talk about the Florida Panthers, who are very good. Uh, obviously, defending Stanley Cup champs. 
Um, they were first in the Atlantic last year, second in Corsi 4 percentage, third in expected goals 4 percentage, and eighth in scoring chances 4 percentage at 5v5. They were killing it in the underlying stats. At their 5v5 save percentage was second in the league with 925 at and uh their 5v5 shooting percentage was 25th at 8.89 so that shows there's probably going to be positive regression at 5v5 like there's like crazy amounts actually because they're producing so much and just weren't converting the only guy that could convert at 5v5 consistently was sam reinhardt uh everyone else was was snake bit for most of the year um and then their power play was eighth in the league at 23.5 percent conversion uh that's another uh, uh, that that's that's another area where they could improve their underlying stats they were second in uh Corsi four per 60 uh and expected goals four per 60 and scoring chances four per 60 uh on the power play in the league so one of the best teams behind I think only Minnesota in terms of those underlying stats and they had the 23rd ranked shooting percentage. So that also shows me that they could, their power play could be even better as well. And that's with uh, Sam Reinhart scoring at like a 35% clip or whatever it was on the power play. So uh, yeah, I, I mean, there's only room to improve for the Florida Panthers here. That being said, Fatigue is probably going to be a factor. Uh, they have a really short off season, obviously making it to the Cup final, but also uh, the Cup final ended way later than it than it normally does. Yeah. Like it was right at the end of June, um, so they only really have two months uh, to recover two two and a half months to recover uh, from all the celebrating and and just the just the uh, the grind of the of the Stanley Cup playoffs. So um, uh, let's not but yeah. let's not forget that uh, the year before they made it to the Cup final too. So there's a lot of exactly kilometers on this team. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And we saw that with Tampa Bay after a while, like you, you could, you started to see the wear and tear on this team after going to the cup final year after year. Um, so we'll see if that affects Florida at all, but there is, there is definitely um, some cause to be relatively excited about the guys uh, that you're, you're going to be holding in, in fantasy leagues um, in terms of key departures, uh, a couple of major ones, Brandon Montour is the biggest one. Uh, their power play quarterback is out the door. Vladimir Tarasenko, um, obviously we just talked about him, went to Detroit. Anthony Stolarz went to Toronto to Tana with Joseph Wall. Oliver ekman Larson also to the Leafs. Uh, and Kyle Ekposo, uh, I don't know, did he retire? Or is he just a UFA I, right now? I actually, I don't, I'm not I sure. I don't think he announced a retirement. I think he's just uh, I don't we, think yeah, so either. for a PTO, yeah. <laughs> It feels like it feels like uh, we might be getting to that to that point with him, but uh, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna write him off yet. Uh, their key additions: Chris Dreger. They brought him back uh, after a couple of years where he essentially didn't play in the NHL uh, in Seattle. Uh, Nate Schmidt and Adam Bokvist are kind of rounding out the bottom pair uh, in uh, on their decor. Um, I mean, it does kind of look like this team got a little bit worse uh what do you, what do you yeah. think yeah yeah uh i i actually was a little upset that they lost montour i i was i was a really big fan of montour i know he uh he also pissed some people off last year but uh he his, his numbers under the hood were, were still pretty good and, and you know everyone on apples of genos was like be patient be patient it's coming and and he, he did have some good stretches of, of point production I, I was hoping that he'd he'd re-sign with the panthers and we could see that positive uh, regression, just like we saw with Reinhardt last year. If you remember Reinhardt in the 22-23 season, he just, man, he was not finishing at all. And then yeah. last year, uh, man, could he finish? He he overperformed. Uh, so yeah. I was expecting a bit of that from Montour. But yeah, no, I agree. Uh, a bit of a step back. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I mean, obviously, they're, they're, uh, their top forwards are, are all still there. Uh, they locked uh, a lot of guys up, and where Brand with the hole that Brandon Montour left uh, creates some opportunity for others, and we will get into that 
in a moment. But let's talk about the goaltenders. Uh, Sergei Bobrovsky, still there. 58 starts last year with a 924 even strength save percentage. He was fantastic through the regular season and the playoffs. Another guy that I would be watching out for for some fatigue. Uh, they did... Uh, uh, they did play Stolarz a decent amount and he performed extremely well, but obviously he's not there. But they do have Chris Dreger, who had only two starts in the NHL last year, had a 942 even strength save percentage in those two starts. Obviously, really small sample size, so hard to really glean a lot from that. But he did have some really solid success uh, with Florida and kind of put him on the map um, the, a few years ago uh, before he got um, picked by the uh by the seattle kraken uh, in the expansion draft um and then spencer knight uh he had a 905 save percentage with charlotte last year uh didn't play any nhl games uh he's he struggled a little bit um in the ahl uh spent some time in the player assistance program um struggled in the nhl really in his last stint so uh hard but he's still there like he's still a young goaltender uh still a guy that could get some opportunity so uh a guy that you should definitely keep on your radar um but this is still a situation where i think bobrovsky is going to get the lion share of starts so what do you think about that man no i, I absolutely agree uh bobrovsky i mean look at all the work this guy did for you in that in that Stanley Cup run. I think Paul Maurice is is going to keep giving him the trust. Uh, you do make a good point about just load management. Like, Bobrovsky had also has had tons of kilometers throughout his career, including postseason kilometers. He's getting up there in age. So, um, you know, given Chris Dreger a, a few more sharp, uh, starts than than usual, uh, that, that makes me interested as a, as a zero-G option. All right. Schedule quirks for the Florida Panthers. Gugsy, walk us through them. Let's do, let's do it. You got 14 back-to-backs. That's tied for fourth in the league. 27 off nights. That's tied for 19th. Uh, so for weeks 22 to 24th playoff schedule, 10 games, five off nights. And for weeks 23 to 25 playoff schedule, you got nine games with also five off nights. Yeah, I mean, they're kind of middle of the middle of the pack uh in both situations actually the uh weeks 23 to 25 that's actually a pretty bad schedule uh not a lot of games a lot of off nights but uh um not a ton of games total but hopefully uh if you've got florida panthers uh you've got a weeks 24 to 20 22 to 24 playoff schedule that is i mean in most of the leagues that i play in that's that's uh that's how it is just to avoid the load management situations um but yeah, yeah, I mean that that's not the way all leagues work. So uh all right, let's let's go into our power play projection. This is pretty cut and dry here outside of the defense position. So Barkov, Verhege, Kachuk, and Sam Reinhardt I have as the four forwards. And I have Aaron Ekblad as the defenseman here. Now, Nate uh, uh, infamously on the uh, projections episode for the Florida Panthers, talked about Adam Bokvist, uh being being the guy to uh, to quarterback the power play, and he baked that into his projections. I don't see that being the case. Um, I, I think there there are some arguments that have been thrown out there, not necessarily by Nate, but by others about how well why did Oliver Ekman Larson uh, get get the time last year when when Brandon Montour is out? But, well, the fact of the matter is Aaron Ekblad was also out at the same time uh, that Montour was, so he he wasn't wasn't given uh, an opportunity there. Um, I do I just think that this guy still has something something left yeah. in the tank. Uh, he's just struggled so much with injuries. Uh, but he's still a really important part of this team, and uh, I mean, I mean, I don't really have have a ton of other reason to be excited about Aaron Ekblad other than uh, I just feel like um, it was his spot before Montour came in. I don't know that Bokvist really moves the needle a ton, although he has had in limited power play time some decent underlying numbers, um, but. And maybe that's why they brought him in. Like it is, it is very possible that that's the case. Um, like they think that he's going to be like a, a Montour light, uh, but I still just see Aaron Ekblad being the guy here. Um, yeah. Give me your thoughts, Gugsy. What, what do you, what do you think about that? Yeah, no. Uh, what I like about Ekblad is um, 
he's always had a high ceiling. Uh, and you know, he, he's before Montour took the, the spot away from him, I think it was two, maybe three seasons ago. He, he showed that he could perform, uh, as a power play one D man. Um, you know, your, his Yahoo ADP, I think was, uh, in the one twenties. So with that ceiling, he has the potential to be your second defenseman. He, he, and the downside of course is his injuries as always. And, you know, you never know Forsling's breathing down his neck. Um, uh, but at 122, I think the the upside, the ceiling is is too good to pass up. Um, I'm taking him. He got he gives you bangs, he gives you shots, and he could give you good power play production once again. Now that Mount Montour is out of town, so I like him. All right, buddy. Why don't you walk us through the my forward projections for the Florida Panthers? All right, we got the big dog Alexander Barkov projected at 33 goals, 62 assists, 95 points. Carter Verhage, 41 goals, 37 assists at 18 points. Uh, Sam Reinhart, Samson, is coming in at 45 goals, 41 assists, 86 points. And Matty Kachuk, 30, is that 37? That's 37 goals. 37. Yeah, yeah the sevens look like ones in this <laughs> font. I got I to gotta do something about that on the slide. Hey, I, I, know, I also noticed you said 18 points for Carter Verhage. I'm like, no, no, that's <laughs> no, 78. 70. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's, let's get it. Does, it really, they really do look like ones, though. It's throwing me off a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even catch the 18 points. Yeah, Carter Vegas at 18 <laughs> points. You'll you'll want him on your team, fellas. Uh, yeah. Anyways, yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, 288 <laughs> okay. shots for uh, Kachuk. 122 hits. 33 power play points. Um, that's beautiful. Sam Bennett, bangers, beast, apples and genos. Love Sam Bennett. He's going to give you 25 goals, 28 assists, 53 points with 182 hits. And uh, Evan Rodriguez, hot rod. Uh, that's not 14. That's 14 goals. Yeah, okay. <laughs> 30, <laughs> 44 points. I was about to say 74 goals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine yeah. Evan Rodriguez just his shooting percentage <laughs> going from like a career 7% to like 25? Just, oh, just crazy. <laughs> he chucks pucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is a puck chucker for sure. Uh, any of these uh, outside of the seventy-four goals for Evan Rod- Rodriguez? Uh, <laughs> any of these? Any of these names popping out as 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 surprises for you here? Honestly, no. Like, um, yeah. we know how good this team is. I'm expecting all of this. Uh, I guess Sam Bennett at 25 goals, but even that doesn't surprise me too much. Uh, Sam Bennett, I mean, this is one of former fourth overall. He 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 has that pedigree. Um, especially if he if if he's filling in for an injury, no problem. I think he could hit 25 goals, no problem. Yeah, and I think I think just uh, he's a guy that perennially gets hurt for like 20 games or so it seems um so if he has a full healthy 82 game season he shoots enough he's not a high high efficiency converter but he shoots enough that i think he can uh, just and he plays enough minutes um yeah. that he he'll pretty easily get at least over the 20 goal mark um and then uh yeah i mean no real surprises here like like you said there's enough of a sample size for all of these guys and like they're all pretty much playing in the same situation um that uh, it, it they're this was this team was really easy to project i guess that's that's really the, yeah. the big thing i don't have any any big swings on them other than on the defense uh so walk us through my def- defenseman projections here okay you got uh, gustav forsling for 12 goals 13 assists and 45 points he's going to give you 109 blocks and 113 or sorry 109 hits and 113 blocks and then our boy uh aaron ekblad 18 goals 39 assists uh 57 points 240 <laughs> shots huge <laughs> one i gotta take it slow 133 hits <laughs> and 104 blocks so not bad not bad <laughs> I mean, like, look at these, okay? If you're watching the YouTube, look at the ones. Like, there's a lot of ones and sevens on this page. Look at the ones and the sevens. They look almost exactly the same. Like, like, give give the man a fucking break, all right? Like, this is this is. Uh, uh, I I made it challenging on him. Yeah. So so the big surprise here is Aaron Eckblad. Obviously, I've got him kind of back to. Um, I mean, relatively not close, not really close to where his. Uh, uh, where his point production was before Montour started being the the power play quarterback, I, it's not quite to that level, but I I do have him 
uh, producing pretty well and and getting on that power play. So that that's where my projections differ a little bit. I do think Blake also might have had Ekblad as the as the power play quarterback, but I, I'm not 100 percent sure. I'd have to look into that. Um, Gustav Forsling, um, you mentioned to him potentially breathing down his neck. They just I wanted them to to use him. Uh, back back when Ekblad and Montour were out, uh, we talked all about how he was a huge sleeper. He was going to get this opportunity on the power play to start the year, and then they used OEL. So it just it's clear to me that Maurice uh, doesn't really see him as as a power play guy, but he does produce enough five v five, um, and obviously plays a ton. Like he's he's the, last year was kind of his coming out party, right? Like yeah. everyone talked about Gustav Forsling uh, being this defensive uh monster a uh, guy that could defend that could uh defend Connor McDavid uh because he uh he just was in the right place all the time he could skate uh but yeah it it just seemed like everyone is like oh wow Gustav Forsling he's here like this is a this is a guy that can actually do something so yeah. and that actually uh you can see that in his Yahoo ADP because he's in the top 100 he's he's been uh, drafted at 96th uh which I I don't think I'd be drafting him there no, uh no. just because there's no power play opportunity uh and I I just think at that range you can still get some really solid power play quarterbacks but yeah, uh that's, that's really surprising yeah, what it, that he's getting drafted so high considering uh ekblad is is what like 30 spots of an adp uh lower than him I, that really doesn't make i don't even think daily faceoff has forsling as the power play one quarterback so it's yeah and i mean i'm i mean again like there there's something to be said especially on yahoo where i mean the mock drafts are kind of uh, there's no filter for for those guys like like uh <laughs> anyone can just get into them and just start a mock draft and then a lot of people drop out so the, yeah. the i mean the numbers are not entirely accurate to to what your uh to the way that your drafts are going to going to to, to uh uh yeah to the to the way things are going to happen in your drafts but uh, I do think that uh, there is something to be said about someone that gets a ton of headlines and uh, uh, a ton of discussion in the playoffs going into the next season. I think in leagues, in Yahoo leagues, they're probably going to get a bit, of, get a, a bit of a bump because of that, and that's something that you definitely need to watch for, uh, especially if you're if you're with guys that aren't like necessarily listening to fantasy hockey podcasts like this, um, because. Uh, they're gonna fall for that, right? They're gonna fall for for the ADPs uh, skyrocketing and being like, "Oh yeah, this guy was awesome in the playoffs." <laughs> but like, was he awesome because his fantasy value is gonna was high, or was it he awesome because he just played really well all around? Yeah, um, you that's just, that's you just something. reminded me of uh, my my past self who would draft teams based on how many headlines they'd be in uh, for the playoffs. So uh, thank yeah, you for that. <laughs> yeah, no, of course, like it, it's it's uh, I mean, yeah. Anyways, it's it, it, it's natural, especially if you're not like obsessed the way that we are with this type of yeah. shit. Uh, so, uh, in terms of a punt, uh, I'm punting Sam Reinhart just because uh, he's going in the second round, both in Apples and Genos leagues and Yahoo leagues. I do, I don't think his production is going to fall off that much. I'm, just, I just think that. I'm more comfortable taking some other guys at, in that range. Uh, he's the closest thing I'd have to a punt, but it's not it's not significant. And then in terms of a sleeper, Aaron Ekblad, we've talked enough about him, though, already. Uh, top three targets. I've got Barkov. Barkov's ADP is actually pretty low, too. It's uh, in Yahoo, he's going at 51. Uh, and, and so that's in the fifth round. And then in Apples yeah. and Geno's League's 37.7, uh, which is in the fourth round. So both of those situations i'm stoked to take alexander barkov um so yeah i'm i'm shocked about that frankly Me too. and then obviously i have aaron ekblad here and then sam bennett not being drafted in yahoo leagues which is shocking to me considering they're bangers cats uh and then his uh, apples and genos adp 203.8 um so that's a guy that is definitely on my radar there even though I don't think that his ceiling is is necessarily incredibly high, but he brings enough peripheral value that uh, yeah. his uh, I, I'm I'm okay with with having him on my team uh, at least at the at the bottom end. So, are there any other names here uh, that you are targeting? Um, no, I, 
uh, on Barkov, um, it's it's absolutely insane how underrated he is in this regard. And I know everyone's like, we always say Barkov is the most underrated, but he literally is so underrated because last year he was also like going in the fifth round, uh, which was nuts. This is a a ninety. He could get a hundred points. I wouldn't be so surprised yeah. if he does that. Um, I don't know if if it's his injury history that is scaring people, or just because he's a pure C, but. Man, this guy is a, a, an absolute beauty, especially in face-off leagues. He's he's just pure value. Um, I would have no problem taking him in the third. No problem at all. Also had a huge hits bump last year, which is cool. Oh yeah, I, I talked about yeah. this with Blake when we when we were doing that uh, when we were ranking centers uh, and uh, uh, Barkov. I I would not want him bearing down on me uh, uh, coming coming in for the hit because he is a yeah. he's a big boy. He oh, yeah. he seems like he seems like a very nice boy, but uh, <laughs> yeah. he's he's a large man uh, for sure. Yeah. You see his uh, his Yahoo picture, and it's like, oh, what a nice looking guy. I bet he loves his mother. But no, he can hit. He can hit. Yeah, definitely. All right, let's talk about the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, they were eighth in the Atlantic last year. Uh, their underlying stats were terrible. 30th in Corsi 4 percentage, 27th in expected goals 4 percentage, and 30th in scoring chances 4 percentage at even strength. I mean, they were right where they, they were supposed to be. Nothing surprising here. 5v5 save percentage, they were actually pretty good. Uh, they had a 908 as a team, uh, which was 13th in the league. Uh, and then their shooting percentage was 13th as well at 9.67 at even strength. Their power play, 27th in the league at a 20, uh, sorry, a 17.5% conversion rate. Uh, and their production on the power play under the under the hood was not was not good either. So uh, a team that is, uh, I mean, very young. Uh, they're just pushing pushing through. This is a team that I do think. Um, could see a little bit more success this year uh and that is um uh, partially because of one major move that they made in the off season uh their key departures uh jordan harris and tanner pearson their key additions patrick line and alex barboule up until the line trade it was really just like okay like it's just the same old canadians like hopefully their young guys take a step and maybe there's some guys that graduate from from the minors uh that that do something in the nhl but yeah uh patrick line is is huge like that that yeah. uh changes the the look of their power play um it's just another weapon along with cole caulfield that can shoot the puck uh and that uh, yeah it, i think that that could move the needle at least a little bit there to kind of raise them potentially above teams like the senators and the and the sabers in the atlantic division what what are your thoughts on the line a trade are you excited about this uh in terms I'm of fantasy super excited i when uh i i root for pretty much all canadian teams so i remember when winnipeg got that second overall when they jumped a bit and i was so excited because this this prospect had so many comparisons to to a shot like ovechkin's and I remember that 2016 draft. It was like maybe he should be the first overall. So I was I was a little bummed to see his career not really panning out uh, in that way. But uh, you know, mental health can be a bitch, and um, you know if he can overcome that, I, I think this guy could be a hell of a player. It's a little you know out, outside of you know hockey analytics. Montreal is a tough fucking market. It's a really tough market, and I I do wonder how someone with you know, vulnerable mental health is going to perform there, especially when they're on a cold streak. Even the best goal scorers, they go on their cold streaks, and it seems like Patrick can be a little hard on himself. Um, so hopefully um, uh, the, the coaching staff in Montreal are able to give him a, a nurturing environment so that he could just focus on uh, slamming pucks into the back of the nets. On the flip side, he is a very confident guy and has notoriously been that way in the media. Uh, he already has said that he is not coming back to score 20, 30 goals. He's he's wanting to score 40, 50. Uh, so, uh, I mean, that that's exactly what you want to hear out of Patrick Laine. Uh, and uh, I think that having Marty St. Louis as a coach uh, is going to be pretty major uh, for Laine. I think that... Um, he is kind of a nurture. He seems like a nurturing voice for young players. Not that line, line is young, but he's a guy that, that needs to kind of like get the confidence back and get back in a headspace where, where he, he can produce again. And I think, uh, Marty St. Louis is a guy that can put him in 
in a situation uh, where he'll succeed. So I, I, I'm I pretty excited about Patrick Laine. I, I mean, I have relatively conservative excitement, but it, it, it's certainly uh, it's certainly excitement, definitely. Oh, yeah. Um, I agree. And then in terms of goaltending, Sam Montembeau has been pretty awesome the last couple of years. He had 40 starts last year in uh, in a situation where there was a three goaltender carousel for a good chunk of the year. Um, he still still uh, had 40 starts. So I think he, I see him as the 1A here at the very least, if not a volume starter. Uh, he had a 9-10 save, even strength save percentage, not a 970. It might look like that. A 910 <laughs> even strength save percentage. Uh, Caden Primo had 21 starts with a 924 even strength save percentage uh i don't know what do you think here like caden primo uh obviously performed pretty well in a limited sample size he's been a guy that's been fairly highly touted for a while that's a guy that i definitely have an eye on in terms of zero g situations yeah. but montembo yeah. as well has a decent sample size of of outperforming the environment in front of him um and the environment hasn't been great let's be honest like the defense for montreal is not strong and i don't think it's really that much better this year no. so uh i i think uh montembeau is a guy certainly to consider but i i don't know what do you what do you think about montreal like are you are you interested in either of these guys in your drafts you know, I, 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 I'm not gonna, I'm probably not gonna draft Montebo unless it's uh, super, super late. Um, the way I judge goalies, you know, I, I'm zero G like, like pretty much I think everyone in Apples and Genos, but the, I judge goalies based on the defense in front of them. And as you said, the, the defense in front of uh, Montebo and Primo, not too great. Uh, but it, that just makes it that much more remarkable that these guys performed as well as they did with a rebuilding young team that doesn't play very good defense. So, you know, maybe if they make, you know, a, a move for a stellar uh, stay-at-home defenseman or they just change their defensive structure a bit, maybe we could see some some po more positive regression. Uh, but honestly, late rounds are waiver wire pickups for me. I'm, I'm not going to spend too much draft capital on these guys. Yeah, definitely. Uh, all right. Talk to me about schedule quirks for the Montreal Canadiens this year. They got 15 back-to-backs third. Uh, best in the league 27 off nights that's tied for 19th best for playoffs weeks 22 to 24 uh, they have 11 games and three off nights and for weeks 23 to 25 you get 13 games with six off nights yeah so the 13 games with six off nights in 23 in weeks 23 to 25 that's the second best playoff schedule in the league over that stretch uh so uh, pretty interesting uh actually like even though they don't have a ton of off nights through the year uh there are some a decent amount right at the end of the season so uh definitely um especially these top four forwards uh on on the canadians those are guys that uh, you probably want your lineup if your playoffs are in those weeks. Um, in terms of weeks 23 to, 22 to 24, a lot of games. 11 games is a lot uh, over that stretch. Uh, three off nights, not so great. But I, again, uh, your top, these top guys are going to be playing a lot over that stretch. Uh, so if, if they're, uh, I mean, guys like Cole Caulfield is going to be in your lineup every night. Um, so if you've got a guy like that playing 11 games over, over your playoffs, you're pretty happy with that. Um, all right, let's talk about the power play projection. I think this is pretty cut and dry for the most part. There is a conversation, uh, that you could have in a couple spots, but, uh, I've got Nick Suzuki, Cole Caulfield, Patrick Line, Uri Slavkovsky, and Mike Matheson. Um, Matheson, I think was so productive last year really efficient across the board had career highs everywhere uh lane hudson though is uh is in the w is waiting waiting in the wings as kind of the power play one quarterback of the future do you see him potentially stealing some power play time this year or is it maybe a little too soon yeah i think it's a little too soon uh, uh marty st louis has praised matheson constantly he loves matheson on the power play uh matheson produces on the power play and and I think there's a there's some actual pressure for this team to not just to suck I think um I think yeah. management and coaching want them to at least uh, attempt to hit that bubble playoff position so I I just don't see uh, a rookie uh with zero games in the NHL taking that position unless like it's midway through the season and Madison's dealing with some injuries sure but as of right now I wouldn't be worried about that 
Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of with you there to be honest. I do see Hudson as a guy that could perform even without power play time right out of the gate. Um he's he's that good. I I think, but uh for this season I think Matheson is probably still the guy on the power play. Um all right, why don't you walk us through my forward projections for the Montreal Canadiens? All right, we got Nick Suzuki projected for 28 goals, 46 assists, 74 points. Uri Slavkovsky, 20 goals, 43 assists, 63 points, and a beastly 146 hits. He's a big boy. And Cole Caulfield, 43 goals, 28 assists, 71 points with 320 shots. The new guy, Patrick Laine, 31 goals, 33 assists, 64 points. Coming back to that old uh, Patrick Laine we, we remember. Alex Newhook, who everyone forgets is a Montreal Canadian, 17 goals, 25 assists, 42 points. And Kirby Doc, which I, I am interested in, 13 goals, 22 assists, and 35 points. What pops out at you here uh, in terms of those projections? Uh, yeah, well, uh, Slavkowski, I think uh, last year people were wondering uh, that this might be a bit of an overperformance, but uh, I actually agree that he's capable of. of 20 goals he's he's solid um i think he's won the the trust of his coaching staff and he's only getting more and more confident you can just see the confidence he's off of him look at his uh, highlight reel package from last year so uh i'm, I'm looking forward to putting slavkowski on my teams yeah yeah totally and i think there's some there's some really nice peripheral coverage like you said with uh 146 hits that i have pr- him projected for this i think is a relatively conservative projection for slavkowski i think he's got a pretty high ceiling um where he could all like he could potentially have similar point totals to suzuki and caulfield uh up in the 70s um i think that there is uh there's a situation where that that could happen if things fall right for slavkovsky so i am pretty pretty excited for him going into this year um I have Caulfield for a, a career high 43 goals. Um, I mean, this isn't a big surprise. Uh, he's been, everyone talks about him being uh, the only 40 goal scorer in the league to not actually score 40 goals. Uh, but <laughs> he's just, he is destined to do that. He's uh, an elite shot producer, one of the best in the league. Uh, and uh, was, uh, his conversion rate was down last year. So I, yeah. I just see him. Uh, I, I see him bouncing back in a really yeah. good way and, and being r- a really, really valuable fantasy asset. Um, and then Patrick Line, I have a relatively conservative projection for him: thirty-one goals, thirty-three assists. Um, I, I, I do think that there there could be potential for some value there. Although his five e five situation, I'm not super excited about um, unless he is able to to find his way on the top line. Um, but then that would kind of eat into the production of, of the other guys. So, uh, not you're maybe not as excited about those guys then there either. So, um, all right, let's go to the defense. Uh, so I've got three guys projected here. Why don't you walk us through those projections? Mike Matheson's going to get you 15 goals, 41 assists and 56 points. He's projected for 176 blocks. Lane Hudson, uh, nine goals, 16 assists, 25 points. Not bad for a rookie D. And Caden Goulet, I love this guy. He's he's beautiful in the Bangers League. Caden Goulet for six goals, 20 assists, 26 points, 127 hits, and 203 blocks. That's awesome. Yeah, I love that. I think Gooley is going to be a guy that you're you're picking up and dropping in, in your Bangers Cats Leagues across the board. Probably isn't going to get uh, any power play opportunity, but uh, uh, the, that's a guy that, that is growing and uh, has proven that he can he can fill the, the stat categories for sure um lane hudson like i said i think uh he like he could he could score 10 goals right out right out of the gate in his rookie season which for a defenseman is solid especially one that's not getting much power play time so uh and then mike matheson i i think he's a guy that uh is pretty exciting um yeah. and a guy that's being underdrafted in in yahoo he's at uh getting drafted at 126 which is shocking to me. Like after the season he had last year, uh, I just don't think that the general population is still is paying attention to him yet. In Alps and Geno's leagues, he's getting drafted at sixty one. That's probably yeah. more a more reasonable spot for Mike Matheson. I've seen him go even higher than that in some spots, which I I don't know that I love. But yeah, I, I'm I'm still pretty high on him uh, on him this year for sure. 
Um, and then in terms of a in terms of a punt, uh, I've got Kirby Doc. So Kirby Doc is uh, is getting. I mean, he's not really even really getting drafted, but he's a guy that's on a lot of people's radars. Um, I just don't see him producing a ton without power play time. Uh, yeah, that's gonna I hurt agree. him. Uh, so unless he's able to get on that top unit in some way, shape, or form, which I, I just don't see it happening. Uh, he's he's a punt for me. And then my sleeper is Lane Hudson, and that is mainly contingent upside. Like, if Matheson gets hurt or if they decide to give him an opportunity on the top power play, I think uh, I think he could produce really nicely for them. Um, yeah. Not a, I don't think he's going to be a big peripherals guy, uh, but it's, I mean, he's there's really limited sample size. Uh, he's only played one game in the league, I believe, so... Uh, so we'll see, we'll see kind of what he brings there. It's hard. Peripherals are hard to project for rookies, but, yeah. um, yeah, I think, I think Hudson, uh, is, is definitely exciting and a guy to watch. Definitely. Uh, top three targets. Uh, I've got Cole Caulfield. We mentioned that before. Um, I think he's going to have a really good year in Yahoo leagues. He's getting drafted at 85th, uh, which that would be incredible for Cole Caulfield. And then Apples and Geno's leagues, he's at forty fourth, uh, and that that seems like a reasonable spot for Cole Caulfield. Like I, I, I'm pretty happy with that. So that's the back end of the fourth round. If you get him any later than that, I think that's really nice value. Um, Uri Slavkovsky, I, I think he could bring you some nice value in Yahoo leagues. He's getting drafted at one twelve. That's a really nice spot for him. In Apples and Geno's leagues, seventy third. Um, not sure I'm as stoked about that. But uh, if you're getting him past pick 100, I think you're really excited about Slavkovsky. And then Patrick Laine, uh, I think he could bring you some nice value. I do think his ADPs are pretty inaccurate just because the trade uh, happened so recently. So I, it's not even really worth assessing assessing those. They're like in the like around 150 in both spots. Uh, but it, it's certainly that's certainly not where he's going to land when draft season comes. So hard to tell with him, but I, I think that he could he could potentially bring you some nice value too. Uh, any other names you want to touch on here, Gugsy, before we move on? Yeah, for uh, for Kirby Doc, I, I agree with your uh, sentiment that you know he's he's not going to have uh, much of a year for fantasy, but I do want him on my watch list uh, just in case. Like let's say Slipkowski or Line really don't click with anyone i think kirby doc's gonna be that first one and first man up um so he's on my watch list i am not expecting much for him unless he gets that power play one time and i'm gonna have some notifications on my phone just in case one of these guys one of these forwards gets injured so i can quickly pick him up yeah yeah no that's fair that's fair i i think he probably is the next man up beyond those two guys so yeah i think i think that's a that's a fair point for sure uh all right Ottawa Senators, uh, another per team. perennial underachieving team. Uh, it, they are a team. <laughs> I love that quote. I love that so much. <laughs> they are a team. Uh, <laughs> they were seventh in the Atlantic last year. Uh, doesn't look like a playoff spot to me, despite uh, all the guarantees going into the season. Um a 5v5 production under the hood, 16th in Corsi 4 percentage, 16th in expected goals 4 percentage, 21st in scoring chances 4 percentage at even strength. So pretty average numbers, honestly. Um, their 5v5 save percentage was 28th at 894. Their goaltending was horrendous last year. That should improve. Uh, their shooting percentage uh, at 5v5, 23rd in the league at 9.19. So probably a bit of positive regression to come there as well. Uh, their power play also was pretty bad uh 18 percent conversion that's tied for 23rd in the league uh they had the 27th ranked shooting percentage on the power play uh but their shot and chance generation on the power play was closer to middle of the pack so i think there's probably some positive regression to come on the power play as well so i think there are some bounce back seasons coming here for ottawa senators players um what do you think man yeah i know um you know, last year was such a shit show, but hey, fuck, every year for this team has been a shit show. But uh, last year especially, yeah. <laughs> again, the the players said they were affected by the, all the drama with, with ownership, and uh, they had a coaching change. Jack Martin came back from 
from wherever the hell he's been in the last 20 years. From the dead? <laughs> from the dead, yeah. Like, yeah, he's a little old. I, I yeah. But, uh, I, you know, as a, I watched Travis Green coach uh, on the Canucks, and, you know, there's criticisms for him, but I, he does get a lot out of his players. His training camps, uh, you better show up to play uh, when it's training camp time, and I think he could push this team to at least outperform where they were last year. I, I hate to say I'm expecting a lot from this team because they always let me down but I, I i think they should be a bubble team but again we've been saying that for like the last three years i know it's a weird it's a weird one for sure <laughs> uh let's uh, so their key departures were Eunice corpusalo jacob chikrin dominic kubalik eric brandstrom i think chikrin's the only one that you're really concerned about the yeah. rest of them are probably a net positive honestly uh key additions uh linus allmark is huge um he is projected to be a volume starter there, and that's that's a that's an exciting situation. Michael Amadio uh, as a depth piece, uh, he had a, a few decent seasons in in Vegas as kind of like a streamer level guy. David Perron, um, he could potentially do something, uh, and then Nick Jensen uh, was a part of the return for Jacob Chicker, not really a fantasy relevant guy. Um, yeah, I think this team is marginally better they also signed nick cousins as a fourth line guy also i don't know if you saw today but uh nikolai kuleman got a pto with the senators oh. today oh, do you great. remember that guy it's yeah 38 when, when years this... old yeah when he, was his last season? These, i i think it was 2018 with the islanders uh so oh. he's been in in russia for a while but he's he is back on a pto uh, so that should be interesting, but uh, yeah. So they're they're uh, uh, they're they're trying to get some some bargain value here, but uh, yeah, uh, that's that's uh, relatively interesting. Uh, so Linus Allmark uh, for goaltenders, thirty nine starts. Uh, he's got a nine twenty three even strength save percentage. Uh, that's what he did last year in Boston. Anton Forsberg, he had twenty eight starts with an eight ninety nine even strength save percentage. Uh, yeah, so he struggled quite a bit. He has had some positive stretches with the Sens. Um, I don't know that the defense is much better, but Travis Green maybe brings a little bit more structure. Um, so I don't know. What do you think? What do you think about the general situation with the Sens? I feel like I, I didn't even let you talk. Uh, I'm just realizing. Uh, <laughs> the, no. I asked for your comment, and then I didn't even let you talk. But no, tell no, me, no, yeah, no, goaltending. Uh, the team in general, what, what are your thoughts here, Gugsy? Yeah, you know, uh, Linus Olmark, uh, that, that's the big addition, of course. And, um, I mean, goaltending last year was just hilariously, comically bad. I think Olmark's gonna, gonna stabilize that a bit. And yeah, as you said, Travis Green, he knows how to play a defensive, uh, structure around the goalie. Um, I think, uh, I, do, do you know what Olmark's ADP is? I didn't actually look at that. That's a good question. Why don't yeah. you um, why don't you talk a little bit about yeah? Let's dive into the schedule quirks, and I will look up his ADP here. Sure, sure, sure. So we got fourteen back to backs. That's tied for fourth in the league. Not bad. Twenty six off nights. That's twenty second. Uh, weeks twenty two to twenty four. Your playoff schedule is going to be eleven games with two off nights, and weeks twenty three to twenty five. They're going to get thirteen games with four off nights. All right. Well, sorry, I was really slow on the draw here. This is terrible podcasting, but I'm just going to look up what Omar ADP in Yahoo. It's 91, um, okay. so relatively high for a goaltender. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, I would say like probably in the. Uh, I mean, let's let's look at ranks though. So if I pull up, um, uh, I can't I can't pull it up here. Yahoo yeah. is so annoying. Uh, yeah, in terms of like looking for, oh no, here we go. Here we go. So he is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Wow. 16, 17, 18th ranked goaltender, uh, in terms of, oh, sorry. That's ranking. Hold on a second. Again, really, really, really good podcasting going on here. <laughs> Yeah, he he is pretty low, uh, actually, surprisingly. So maybe actually a guy that he's he's right going right in the range where I'm like starting to think about taking a goaltender. Um, double digit, double digit area. 
Yeah, but I, I'm not sure that he's necessarily going to be at the top of my ranks at that point uh, yeah. just because Ottawa is such a shit show. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I I don't know that... Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know that that's even really that enticing. But that is a guy... Like, I do think that their situation is going to get better. Um, in terms of the playoff schedule here, uh, I, I like... I, I mean, I like that they're playing a lot of games, but there's not a lot of off nights. So the guy, That's again, uh, it's another situation where your guys like Stutzla, Kachuk, uh, Batherson, uh, they're going to be playing uh, a lot of games over over your your um, playoff week. So um, so that's that's exciting for sure for the Senators. Sure. Yeah. Um, power play projection. This is another interesting one. Are they going to load up yeah. or are they going to split it like they did last year? Now, I hope that they load things up. I know that Travis Green coached the Vancouver Canucks, uh, a team that has loaded things up on the power play uh, year after year. And, I mean, their makeup is a little bit different. I think Vancouver's a little more top-heavy in terms of their offensive talent, whereas Ottawa, uh, there's there's a little more depth there. But... Uh, I still feel like a, a loaded power play is is the way to go. I have Stutzla, Batherson, Kachuk, Norris, who those the last time the Sens had a really good power play, those were the four forwards uh, that were running yeah. it. Um, and then I've got, uh, but I, I think Shane Pinto is a guy that could sneak in there, um, potentially in the Josh Norris spot. Norris has had lingering issues, uh, issues with the same shoulder year after year. That's a guy that I... I know I talk about not being concerned about injuries with players. That's a guy where you kind of have to bake in that concern. Yeah, at this point, you really do. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and and Shane Pinto is on the rise for sure. He had a really nice stretch last year after he came back after his suspension, um, and that's definitely I think the guy that that I would I would think would be pushing for for time um, if Norris is either out or if he's not really. Uh, able right. to figure things out on the power play. Uh, so. And then uh, Sanderson and Shabbat, I have them sharing time on the power play, but I think Sanderson gets a little bit more. It seemed like he was the preferred option last year at times. Uh, what What are your thoughts here? Are there any other guys that you could see getting power play time? Uh, do you lean Sanderson or Shabbat or Norris or Pinto? What are your thoughts here? Yeah, no, I think uh, Norris, it's Norris's spot, uh, but Pinto is breathing down his neck for sure. And again, that that shoulder is something you gotta you gotta consider. If he's not feeling comfortable, if his shot is is off by just a little, you know, the, the shoulder affects your shot by quite a bit. Um, and you know, for that alone, I could see them at least giving Pinto a shot up there. He's he had a good season. He only played uh, what half the the season last year, but when he showed up, he he really showed up. If he could just stay off bet three six five this year, he's gonna be good to go. And uh, looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or or uh, uh his friends need to stay off bet 365 i think yeah, he, he really should just cancel all of his accounts uh yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's really the the uh what needs to happen there for for pinto the poor guy i felt really bad for him but yeah, they, uh yeah. they used him as an example they really did <laughs> yeah definitely for sure uh all right, let's let's uh, go to my forward projections here. Why don't you walk us through uh, all of these Senators players? All right, Timmy Stutes, set, uh, 27 goals, 54 assists, 81 points with 103 hits. He's a banger. Uh, another banger, Brady Kachuk. He's going to give you 36 goals, 49 assists, 85 points. He chucks pucks. He's going to chuck 357 shots and 271 hits. Uh, then you got Claude Giroux, uh, 22 goals, 45 of 6, uh, uh, 67 points there. Shane Pinto, Pinto Bean, 24 goals, 27 assists, 51 points. And uh, Josh Norris, uh, I see him projecting for almost 30, but 29 goals, uh, 33 assists, 62 points, 111 hits. Drake Batherson, 27 goals, 38 assists, 65 points with uh, 97 hits. And David Perron, people forget Perron is now a uh, senator. 21 goals, 23 assists, 44 points. 
108 hits, and I think if uh, any uh, surprise player is going to pop on a power play one, it's probably going to be Perron. Just uh, if something doesn't click, if an injury happens, Perron's been pr a proven power play producer. He's a little old now, but I think he'll get at least a shot there uh, sooner or later. Yeah, I think if things don't uh, don't go as well as 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 they hope at the start of the year, that's definitely a guy that's waiting in the wings. Um, he's got a really good shot off the half wall. Um, so that's that, yeah, that's, I, I, I agree. That's, a, that's a guy that could, should be considered. I haven't projected for a third line role and second power play, but there definitely is a scenario where he moves up the lineup for sure. Um, and then Josh Norris, I, my projection for him is pretty high. I, I am not super confident in that. Um, just because I don't know how his injury is going to affect his production. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I, I could see him, I could see him even playing on the wing, uh, with Shane Pinto 5v5. Um, and then they both get a little bit more ice time, uh, cause, uh, they're, they are pretty, pretty, there is quite a log jam down the middle of, of young talent on this team. Um, any other, uh, any other numbers that kind of pop out at you as surprises here? Let me just see here. You know, uh, Claude Giroux, I, I, I think maybe I just uh, can't let go of prime Giroux, but um, him at uh, 22 goals, 45 assists, I think that's mainly because he's not going to get power play one time. And, you know, I love yeah. watching him in Philadelphia, and he was so lethal there. Um, I totally agree with your projections. It's just just makes me sad because, you know, I don't like seeing my favorite players get old and, you know, not being on power play one. But, yeah. I mean, still pretty good production that I haven't yeah. projected for. I think that's like yeah. like higher than than a lot of people would have for him. But yeah. yeah, it seems like he's kind of been a secondary option uh on the power play. Um but obviously new coach. So, uh, who knows? Yeah. Like it, it, it could knows? be there could be a different philosophy there, but we'll 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 see what happens. Um I do have Brady Kachuk for a career high in points. Uh it's not a crazy career high. Um, but I'm pretty high on him, uh, really low. Like it, what, what, it, what is, uh, what is Blake been calling him? Brady Kachucker? Uh, he's, a, a, yeah. uh, or Br Kachukapuk, Brady Kachukapuk. I don't know. Uh, I, I think that, uh, um, uh, he's, he's still going to produce, uh, pretty well this year. I have him for a career high in assists as well. So, um, so. I, I mean, we'll see what happens there. Um, but I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility for him to so, to be uh, a huge player um, in in terms of in terms of point production as well if, if as just, the perifs. Uh, yeah, if he just uh, gets a little better on the efficiency, uh, gets his shooting percentage up. Uh, I think Blake talked about it a lot. He chucks a lot of pucks, but his shooting percentage, uh, you know, it, it has a bit of room to improve. And if if it does, then, yeah, yeah, he that's going to be a huge season for him then. <clears throat> Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, and then in terms of defense, I've got a couple guys projected here. Why don't you walk us through those? Thomas Javot uh, projected for 10 goals, 35 assists, 45 points, 139 blocks. And his best friend Jake Sanderson is going to project for 9 goals, 32 assists, 41 points, and 150 blocks. Very similar players. Yeah, similar production. Uh, I do have Sanderson projected for a little more power play points and then Shabbat just for a little better efficiency at 5v5. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I could see either of these guys quarterbacking power play one. Um, Sanderson is, is a guy that I think is probably going to go a little higher than than I want to take him. So Shabbat is probably uh, probably a guy that I would target uh, uh, over Sanderson just because his ADP is a little bit lower. He's going at 156 in Yahoo leagues. Sanderson's going at 131. So really, there's not a ton of difference there. But uh, yeah. I mean, both of these guys are probably probably guys that will be at the bottom of your of your defense, but guys that nonetheless will would still be valuable on your fantasy team for sure. Um, yeah, so, uh, and then my top three targets, I've got Drake Batherson. Uh, first off, Batherson uh, is, I mean, he's pretty steady at 60, 65 points, pushing for 30 goals, uh, gets hits, gets shots. 
Um, and he's going uh, in the 90s in both Yahoo and Apples and Geno's leagues. So, uh, I mean, that's a guy that could produce some some decent value there, uh, especially if he gets locked into a top power play that, that plays – the majority of the power play time there um and then i've got shane pinto who his adp uh he's not even being drafted in yahoo leagues and in apples and genos leagues he's being drafted at 230 this is a guy i think you could swing on at the end of your draft and he could return you excellent value or even pick him up off the waiver wire to start the year um but that's a guy i think people are going to be watching uh as the season uh as training camps open they're going to be watching where they're playing him in the lineup and uh, that's going to dictate uh where he goes i think but uh yeah that's a guy that could potentially really pop this year i think and then claude Giroux. Uh, his ADP, his Yahoo ADP is 182, and in Apples and Genos, it's 174. And for a guy that that I have projected to get 67 points, like that's, I mean, that's, that's great. Awesome. Like right yeah. near the end of your draft, uh, I still awesome. think that he has gas left in the tank, even though he's not getting the same opportunity. So I I like Claude Giroux still. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. there's there's a little bit of, uh, I mean, in in uh, Fantrax leagues, he's actually try eligible, center, left wing right wing um so that's that's also pretty nice but he uh has right wing eligibility in yahoo so that's also extremely valuable so i i don't know i i think claude Giroux is a is a is a nice target there are there is there anyone else uh that you're targeting here on the ottawa senators no i thought those are the big boys i think we've uh covered all those uh claude Giroux. i also like the fact that he can win face-offs on the wing i, I love that um yes one thing i want to say about shabbat and sanderson is we kind of know what shabbat is he's got uh quite a bit of a sample size playing on the sanders being their power play one quarterback i think sanderson uh we're still seeing where his ceiling is and um i think there's more room for him to improve compared to shabbat shabbat also has had his history of injuries so with shabbat you know you uh as you said he's going like what a round or two later so that's where the value is but uh i would still target sanderson maybe not where his adp is maybe wait a little bit and uh yeah i i i, I am curious to see sanderson's ceiling because he is a very highly touted pro- prospect he's good at moving the puck he's very talented yeah i think that's a pretty fair point to be honest uh shabbat i don't think that the, his ceiling is really much higher than that but sanderson i think there is room room for more yeah no that's a great that's an excellent point um the tampa bay lightning all right Fourth in the Atlantic last year, uh, just barely made the playoffs, which was a bit of a surprise. Um, their underlying numbers weren't amazing either. Uh, 18th in Corsi 4 percentage at 5v5, 21st in expected goals 4 percentage, 13th in scoring chances 4 percentage. So not terrible, but not uh, not what we're used to seeing out of the Lightning. Their 5v5 save percentage, also surprising, 31st in the league at 890. So just brutal. Um Vasilevsky was out for the first part of the season and then he came back and just didn't have didn't have the same kind of year that you expect out of Andre Vasilevsky but what saved them was the second ranked shooting percentage in the NHL at 10.85%. Uh I do see a little bit of negative regression coming there. Um but what also saved them is the first ranked power play in the NHL, 28.6% conversion. Uh, I do think there's some negative regression probably coming there yeah. for the Lightning for a number of reasons. Uh, they were 10th in Corsi 4 per 60, 11th in expected goals 4 per 60, 10th in scoring chances 4 per 60 on the power play, and 1st in shooting percentage by quite a large margin. They they shot it at 18.56% shooting percentage as a team on the power play. That's pretty high, even for a power play that is that strong. Um, that's that I mean, I don't think that's going to last. And the big kicker is Steven Stamkos is gone. And he's been a yeah. staple on that power play for, I mean, his entire career. And yeah. uh, he is honestly that one-timer on on the hash marks on the left side. That is has been a lethal part of that power play for a while. And now you had a guy in Jake Gensel um, who replaces him there that, I mean he's a fantastic player and I still haven't projected to have a great year, but he's a left shot. 
and that's not necessarily the role that he's played on the power play. So I think there is going to be quite an adjustment with this power play here, and I think it's probably going to dip a little bit more than people think. I don't have that baked into my projection so much, but uh, I think that's something definitely to watch out for there. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Because uh, that's something that I've been harping on, but I haven't heard a lot of other people talk about that. No, I totally agree. Um, moving not only your captain, but like a guy with that role on the power play, um, that's going to that's gonna have an effect. And, you know, the, these aren't robots. These are human beings. You need to, they, they know how Stamkos shoots and passes, how, how his positional, uh, how he plays his positions. Uh, they, they don't know how Gensel is, not just yet. And it's going to take a couple of games before they're comfortable adjusting the power play to Jake Gensel. So, yeah, uh, first in the league, yeah, definitely even even if Stamkos was here i would expect some negative regression but with with that big change yeah, yeah i don't i don't i don't think they're going to meet this same uh target this year yeah for sure uh and then key departures we mentioned steven stamkos mikhail sergachev's another massive one that's their arguably their second best defenseman uh is out the door obviously he didn't play for a good chunk of the year last year with a major injury um but that still really hurts them uh, Anthony DeClaire, their trade deadline acquisition, who actually had a really nice run with them on the top line. He's out the door as well. And Matt Dumba, another trade deadline guy, out the door. Uh, their big acquisition, as we mentioned, Jake Gensel. J.J. Mosier came over in the Sergachev trade. Cam Atkinson got bought out in Philly. Uh, he's going to play probably a bigger role on on the Lightning, uh, which, is, which is interesting. And then Ryan McDonough, they brought him back. They just needed McDonough. Uh, and uh, they're paying him, I mean, almost as much as they were paying Sergachev, which is kind of insane. But, uh, yeah, that is, that's weird. I mean, this team seems like it's worse, does it not? Yeah, definitely, definitely worse. Um, I, <laughs> when these moves are made, when Sergachev was traded, when Stan, everyone was like, what the hell are you guys doing? Um, they're, they're really banking on, on Gensel performing for them. They're, they're, if, if Gensel loses a step, it's, it's going to be some trouble for this team. Yeah, for sure. Um, goaltending, Vasilevsky, as we mentioned, uh, struggled last year. He still had 52 starts after missing a good chunk of the start of the season, which is crazy. They just played the absolute shit out of this guy coming off of a big injury. Uh, and then uh, had a 903 even strength save percentage. I expect that to bounce back. Like this guy has never been a goalie that plays at that level. Um, so I think that I, and uh, a little bit more rest than he's used to uh, with them going out early in the first round. Uh, so I think Vasilevsky is probably primed to bounce back, but obviously he's a goalie. So what the fuck do you, yeah, I don't right. know. What, <laughs> what, do what can you expect? I don't know. Uh, and yeah. Jonas Johansson was just awful. Um, that's another reason why I think Vasilevsky has huge values. He's going to play so much because there's just no one to play behind him. Johansson, 24 starts, 892, even strength save percentage. One of the worst goaltenders in the league. Uh, there's not much there uh, in terms of goaltending depth for the Lightning. Uh, are you concerned about Vasilevsky? Uh, obviously, the environment in front of him has has gotten worse. Uh, what do you uh, think? You know, I'm never concerned about Vasilevsky because he's always on my opponent's team. I'm not wasting that draft capital on on, on Vasilevsky. Uh, maybe in like a points league where where each save is worth uh, way too much. There's some points leagues where goalies are just way too overpowered. So if you're in a points league, um, check out your settings and volume starters like Vasilevsky. Even if he lets in a few stinkers, which he's been known to do, uh, depending on your points league settings, he might be worth a reach there. But generally i i don't care <laughs> he can he can keep stinking it up i'm he's not going to be on my team keep it up all right buddy talk to me about schedule quirks for tampa yeah so they got 12 back-to-backs that's tied for 16th in the league 22 off nights uh that's tied for 27th uh weeks 22 to 24 for playoffs nine games four off nights whereas weeks 23 to 25 they got 10 games with two off nights just two off nights there. so uh, looking at these quirks, like that's a pretty bad situation for Tampa Bay uh, in terms of in terms of fitting guys into into your lineup, uh, both in the playoffs. Like though those playoff schedules are bad. Like they're they're among the worst uh, in yeah. the league in both both uh, weeks twenty two to twenty four and twenty three to twenty five. Uh, yeah. You've got twenty two off nights. That's one of the worst in the league. And then also uh, twelve back to backs. That's middle of the pack, but. 
the significance of back to backs is that means your backup is playing a little bit more, and like mm-hmm. you're probably like do you, you're not gonna roster Jonas Johansson to play back to backs. Like, what do you do? <laughs> like, maybe for a spot start here and there, but like, that's not a great situation. So like, I I just don't really I don't see a ton of upside here in terms of uh the schedule quirks like there's there's nothing to be excited about in fact it's the opposite so uh i think that uh yeah it's it's uh yeah i i don't know uh, i i mean that's not going to deter me from picking tampa bay lightning players but right. it's certainly something to keep in the back of your mind i've noticed that tampa like for the past couple of playoff seasons they've had a bad schedule and i'm wondering if it's just like some agreement they have with the arena because i know the anaheim ducks since I started playing fantasy, the Ducks have had terrific fantasy playoff schedules, and that has something to do with them and their arena. So I'm wondering if Tampa just is screwed because of some arena agreement for every fantasy playoff schedule. It's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. They always have uh, – they don't have a lot of off nights every year too. That's the other thing. The opposite yeah. opposite problem uh, from from Anaheim. Anaheim, what I've heard is – and this is this – is, I mean, I'm digressing a bit here, but Anaheim, what I've heard is they have an agreement with the LA Kings um, yeah. so that yeah. they don't conflict, so that their schedules don't conflict, that they play more off nights. It's, I, I don't know. It's it's something something weird like that. There's something that they they have uh, because they their fan bases are so close in proximity. Right. Um, so I, I don't know. It's something to do with the TV deals, but yeah, anyways. And I, I I don't know why I'm digressing about that if I don't know more information about it. I should like it's just just me rambling, but anyways. All right, let's talk about the power play. We talked about it a bit. Kucherov, Jake Gensel, Braden Point, those are locks. Uh Victor Hedman also a lock on the back end, especially now that Sergachev is out of the picture. Uh the the fourth forward on the power play, that is kind of that spot is kind of up for grabs. Nick Paul played a good chunk of the year on that power play last year uh, as a net front guy. And Brandon Hagel did get some time in the playoffs. He is a stronger offensive player, but it really just kind of, it, it boils down to what are they looking for, uh, for with that fourth forward? Um, what do you think? How do you see it playing out? I know uh, Blake is really high on Brandon Hagel. I kind of am leaning a little bit more towards Nick Paul. Uh, yeah. What are your thoughts here? I, I, I think uh, the coach likes that big booty in front of the net, and that's that screams Nick Paul all day. Um, yeah, I I, I mean, I, Hagel's probably going to get up there here and there, but I think just, last year Paul had it pretty much all season, and I don't see that changing. Yeah, I, I'd give it to Paul. Yeah, I, I, I think so too. Um, let's move on to the forward projections. Uh, Gugsy, walk us through let's this. Let's do it. Braden Points projected at 44 goals, 45 assists, 89 points. Jake Gensel, 43 goals, 48 assists, 91 points with 285 shots. Nikita Kucherov, best right wing in the league once again, is going to be 44 goals, 18, or 70, 78 assists, not 18, 78 assists, 122 points with 302 shots and 49 power play points. That's, that's insane. Uh, Brandon Hagel's projected at 28 goals, 35 assists, 63 points. Nick Paul, 21 goals, 26 assists, 47 points. Anthony Sorelli, 19 goals, 27 assists, 46 points. And the new guy, Cam Atkinson, at a, wow, 24 goals, 26 assists, 50 points. So you're, you're high on Atkinson, eh? Yeah, I mean, that's a guy that's that had pretty decent underlying numbers last year. Um, and they're just so thin up front, yeah. uh, up and down the lineup. I just see him potentially getting a top six role. Um, you could argue whether or not anyone has a ton of value outside of the top line and maybe Brandon Hagel, but, uh, I do think Atkinson's a guy to, to look out for, uh, at the very least. Um, any other numbers that, that pop out to you there? Uh, well, uh, with Braden point, I know he, uh, he got, um, 50 goals last year and yeah, I I don't know if he's going to reach that. I, I definitely agree with the, the 44 goals, but you know, if him and Gensel uh, build some chemistry, which I could see happening, I wouldn't be too surprised at a 50-goal season. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely within the realm of possibility. I'm more conservative with Braden Point just because he's such a high-efficiency high guy. Efficiency, he doesn't shoot yeah. a ton. Um, but he does really get to the scoring areas. He's one of the best in the league at that, So, um, at, in terms of scoring chances. So, I, I, yeah. I mean, I... 
uh, he's pretty consistent year after year, it seems, um, yeah. in terms of his goal production. Um, so it could it could fluctuate. It could be a little lower, it could be a little higher. So yeah, 50, 50 goals is always in the wheelhouse at the very least for Braden Point. You're right. Uh, and then Brandon, Brandon Hagel, I did want to touch on that. I have him, I have the lowest projection on him out of the three, uh, out of uh, Nate Blake and I. Um, and that's mainly because I just don't, think that he's going to get the power play time and his 5v5 situation is considerably worse like he's not playing with steven stamkos anymore uh he's probably not going to get any top line time uh with jake gensel in the fold so i just see that opportunity uh really decreasing for Hagel. and even though he has kind of improved his underlying numbers uh over the last season i just i just see things kind of not being as strong still a a very valuable fantasy asset uh, but I, I, I just, I, I, I'm not as high on him as I have been previously. That's for sure. Um, all right. Defense projections. Uh, why don't you walk us through these two guys here, Guxy? Okay. Victor Hedman. He's the star of the show. He's got no competition for power play. Uh, one he's getting projected for 14 goals, 62 assists and 76 points. Uh, J.J. Moser, I guess he might be competition. I don't think so, but six goals, 27 assists, and 33 points. Yeah, so Victor Hedman, pretty easy guy to project. Uh, he's been fairly consistent outside of the year that he lost power play one to, to Sergachev. Um, I like his situation there. Uh, and Moser, probably going to get some power play two time. I mean, I he's probably just a streamer. For the most part, yeah. but there there is uh there is a little bit of upside there for Mosier, um so uh, definitely got to keep an eye on at the very least, uh but yeah I mean there's not there's not a lot of great uh defense options in terms of in terms of fantasy value on this team that's for sure, um so my punt is Brandon Hagel uh, as I mentioned uh, I think that he he's getting drafted around uh, anywhere from pick ninety to one ten I'm just not. Yeah confident enough in in his yeah. situation for that in terms of sleepers mikey asamont is a guy that i really have liked his underlying numbers and uh with how thin they are up front if he were to get a top six opportunity uh, maybe even in that cam atkinson spot on on the second line that's a guy that i could see doing something like i i, I yeah. mean he's not Again, like it's probably just a streamer guy, but it, it, it may just give him a little bit more value uh, getting getting a little more opportunity, maybe a little more ice time because uh, he he's a really good shot producer. He hits a bit um, and has been, I mean, not not super efficient, but yeah, just a just a guy that that has kind of uh, been on my radar for a couple seasons now. Okay. Um, so you're saying if, if he gets the deployment, there's some real value there. But if he gets yes, the deployment, he's a yeah. guy that I wanted to at least bring up. Um, yeah. Even though I didn't project him, because uh, I yeah. do think that if he gets it, there is, uh, there is a world where he gets a little bit more opportunity, and I think that he he could potentially do something with that. Yeah. Uh, my top three targets are Jake Gensel. Gensel. Uh, is being drafted in Yahoo at 39, 39th, which is the back end of the fourth round, or I guess middle of the fourth round. Um, and I really like that for Jake Gensel. Uh, in Apples and Geno's leagues, he's getting drafted at 21, uh, so in the second round, which is kind of where I'd be pretty happy uh, uh, drafting him. I have him uh, projected for career highs, and part of that is because he's going to be playing with Nikita Kucherov and uh, Braden Point for essentially in all situations. Uh, and I think despite the fact that he played with Crosby for a bunch of years, it may still be the best situation that he's ever had offensively. Uh, maybe that's a hot take, but I, 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 Nikita Kucherov is is incredible uh, in, in terms of offense. I still obviously would take Sidney Crosby uh, over, his, over his career, uh, but... Uh, yeah, Kucherov is 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 right in his prime right now. Victor Hedman, um, he's getting drafted at forty third, so in the fourth round, I like that for him a lot, especially because he's he's gonna get. I have him getting like mid seventies in points, uh, and then Nikita Kucherov, his ADP is fourth. A lot of these guys are being drafted right where I think they should be, 
Nikita Kucherov is Yahoo ADP is fourth. But the fact that he could potentially be uh, like produce in a manner that that <laughs> where he actually outproduces uh, an ADP of four. I mean, that's exciting for me as well. So that I, I threw I threw Kucherov on there just because I didn't see anyone else bringing like crazy crazy value uh, yeah. in terms of their ADP. Is there anyone else that you're targeting here? You know, as you said, this this team is really top heavy. Uh, it, all I want is whoever's on power play one, and and you know the the four of the five guys are staples. It's just that um, Nick Paul uh, versus Hagel thing. And um, personally, I, I I also like Nick Paul for his value. Uh, his ADP is much lower than Hagel's. I don't want to spend uh, an eighth ninth round pick on on Hagel, but I'd be much more willing to take that risk on Nick Paul, who you're pretty much getting for like free last I checked. So yeah. Pretty, pretty good for such a solid power play. Uh, if Nick Paul gets it, that's pretty good value compared to Hagel, where you're giving up quite a bit of draft capital. For sure, for sure. All right. Last but certainly not least, depending on who well, you talk to, the Toronto, the <laughs> Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> uh, they were third in the Atlantic last year at 5v5 numbers, 14th in Corsi 4 percentage, 8th in expected goals 4 percentage, 10th in scoring chances 4 percentage. Their 5v5 save percentage was 24th in the league at a 902. Ilya Samsonov had a really tough year. Uh, Joseph Wohl was hurt. Uh, they had to play Martin Jones for a bit. Uh, it was a bit of a disaster there for, for Toronto and goal. Uh, their shooting percentage at 5v5 it was fourth in the league at 10.61%. So maybe there's a bit of negative regression coming there. But, I mean, they have a lot of high-caliber talent there. Uh, so uh, I don't think that it's super surprising for them to, to be at that level. Uh, and then their power play percentage, they were 24. They, they had a 24% conversion rate that was seventh in the league. And that's despite really tailing off at the end of the season. They had a stretch, uh, going into the playoffs where they just were not doing anything on the power play. Um, coaching staff change. Um, uh, there's, 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 I mean, they said there was going to be big change in Toronto this year. I don't think it was really that big, to yeah, be honest. No. A little disappointed with what they did in the off season. Although I do think they are improved. Um, I don't know. What do you? What do you? From an outside perspective here, Gugsy. What? Yeah. What's your? What are your thoughts on the Toronto Maple Leafs in terms of are they better? Are they worse? How are you feeling? I actually, I actually think they're they're better just with the addition of Chris Tanev. I I know a lot of Leafs Nation is uh, a little upset at that contract, but. Man, he is such a, as a Canucks fan, I got to say, he's, when he's on the ice, you're not worried. And Canucks fans are always worried when I'm always expecting goals to be scored against us. But when Chris Tanev was on the ice, it was, it was, it was relaxing. It was enjoyable. I think Leafs Nation is going to fall in love with him. It's just, the problem is sometimes he's like tied together with scotch tape and band-aids because he's, he gets injured so much, but that's because he plays such a, such a gritty game. He eats pucks for breakfast. If he's healthy, yeah. um, th this team is going to go pretty far, especially in the postseason. If Chris Tanev is healthy in the postseason, man, the, the Toronto is going to be stoked, just stoked. Yeah, I don't. I yeah, I I I'm definitely with you there. Um, I don't really even hate the Ekman Larson signing. Like, I know yeah. I was kind of outspoken about like ah, uh, they could have had Jacob Chikrin, they could have had whoever but it's it's not terrible value it just the term is a little bit weird for me and then anthony stolars was one of the best 5v5 goalies last year uh, actually one of the actually one of the best goalies uh in general uh in terms of per 60 stats um so that's a really nice addition to have as a tandem guy with um with joseph wool uh, and then they lost Ilya Samsonov, Tyler Bertuzzi, TJ Brody, Ilya Labushkin. Those are the main guys. Um, so I do think that they are improved at least slightly. Left wing, they are a bit thin, uh, losing Bertuzzi. But um, I, I think that there are some guys on the left wing that could kind of uh, take another step in their careers, for sure, uh, to kind of make up for that lack of production. So... Let's uh let's go into the goaltending situation. Joseph Wool had 23 starts last year with a 907 even strength save percentage. Anthony Stolarz had 24 starts, 941 even strength save percentage. So these guys are both guys that have performed in limited time. Um, there's a lot of concern about how neither of them have really played 
more than just a limited sample size in any season. So can they, uh, I mean, I see them as like probably a straight tandem with Joseph Wall as the one a just because yeah. he has the he uh, they're used to him but i mean stolars certainly could could uh move in as as the as the starter at some point but i do see them being almost like a straight tandem maybe maybe 55 45 uh how do you see this no i'd, I'd say that's uh, that's perfectly said i mean neither of these guys have taken the lion's share of uh, goalie starts um you know uh, to, to make one a volume starter over the other, I, I don't think that's going to happen, especially since no. Wall has had a, a few injuries here and there. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd see it as a 1A, 1B, and, you know, Stolar's breathing down Wall's neck might, uh, it, that competition might be healthy for the both of them. So looking forward to seeing how they treat this. Yeah, and Brad Treliving did also say publicly that they are looking uh, at at ways to try and, and preserve Joseph Wall and, and, and help him uh to 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 kind of reduce uh, the frequency of of the injuries they're going to be looking at the way that he trains and and just the the way that they deploy him so so that is interesting going forward but it does seem like he is their preferred option at least going into the season uh why don't you talk about scheduling quirks for the toronto maple leafs so they got 16 back-to-backs that's tied for first in the league 32 off nights tied for seventh in the league. Or, yeah, uh, weeks 22 to 24 playoff schedule. 10 games, four off nights, whereas weeks 23 to 25, they have 12 games with four off nights. Yeah, I mean, across the board, pretty nice scheduling quirks for the for the Leafs. Uh, first and back-to-backs, uh, they have more off nights than they typically do. They, this typically isn't a huge off night team, but they're they're kind of their top third in the league in that so so that's certainly uh, an interesting an interesting thing and then playoff schedules are pretty decent as well like 10 10 games uh in uh, weeks 24 to 22 to 24 it's not the best but it's 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 pretty decent and then 12 games four off nights and 23 to 25 that's again um not not cream of the crop in that such in uh in, in those weeks but they're they're up there so um a lot to be excited about there with the toronto maple leafs in terms of the way that their schedule has has kind of has kind of fallen out uh in terms of being a fan of the team uh 16 back-to-backs they're always at the top of the league in back-to-backs i don't really understand why um but i so i'm not i i don't love that um uh, but I, I i do i do like it for fantasy purposes uh power play projection so it's been the same five guys for quite a few years now. Matthews, Marner, Nylander, Tavares, Riley. Uh, pretty easy to project. Um, there has been... Uh, I mean, Sheldon Keefe did did like to... Uh, he, he wasn't super sold on Riley. And I've got to be honest, I'm not super sold on him either as the power play quarterback. I don't think that Ekman Larson is... I mean, he's he could get an opportunity here, but I don't think that he's going to move the needle more than Morgan Riley. So I think Riley's going to be the guy uh, for a good chunk of the year, but I do have them kind of uh, sharing time at least a little bit uh, there. Like, cause I feel like there probably will be points where they, they try Ackham and Larson there, but in terms of the other four guys, like obviously those are going to be the four forwards uh, on the power yeah. play. Uh, yeah. Do you have any, any, any thoughts there? Yeah, for, for Ekman Larson, you, you never know what's going to happen. I'm, I'm looking at his ADP at 172.5. I'd probably give that a shot, just stash him, see what happens. Uh, keep an eye on training camp. Uh, I agree, Riley, Riley's been the guy on the power play for, what, a decade now? Um, I don't think it's likely, but, you know, none of us expected Ekman Larson to, to take power play one uh, last year in Florida when uh, they had a bit of an injury, so... You know, who knows? Maybe coaches just really like the way he moves the puck on the power play. I, I'd probably pick him up around those super late rounds and just see what happens. All right. Forward projections. This will be fun. Gugsy, uh, take go. us through it. Big Poppy Austin Matthews is getting 64 goals, 46 assists, 110 points, 318 shots. And one of my favorite things about Matthews is his blocks. He got him projected for 91 blocks. That's over a block. Per game. So, so, so it's cool. actually three, 378 and 97. 
<laughs> that's a, <laughs> that's a seven. Jeez. I know, man. When the, they're both when they're both the both sevens. So when even better. Even yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah no. It, it's it, again. Uh, I've I'm kind of sewering you on the on the font here. <laughs> that's fine. Three hundred seventy eight shots is much better than three eighteen. Three eighteen is no joke either. But yeah, three hundred seventy eight shots and ninety seven. <laughs> Uh, Mitch Marner, uh, 29 goals, 75 assists, 104 points. Uh, William Nylander, 42 goals, 52 assists, 95 points with 315 shots. Uh, John Tavares, 35 goals, 46 assists, 81 points, 292 shots, and 124 hits. Still a banger. Uh, Matthew Nice, 19 goals, 28 assists, 47 points with 170 hits. Uh, Bobby McMahon. 24 goals. Oh, nice. 17 uh, assists, 41 points with 186 hits. And Max Domi, re-signed Max Domi, going to get 14 goals, 38 assists, and 52 points. All right, buddy. Uh, What stands out for you here? Yeah, uh, Matthew Nyes, uh, nearly 20 goals. Are you you, uh, expecting him to play a a bigger role, more ice time uh, this year? Yeah, I mean, I... I, I see him at the very least getting a, a lengthy opportunity playing on the top line. Um, yeah. uh, obviously, Max Domi uh, did get some time with Austin Matthews. It'll be interesting to see how how Craig Berube uh, plays this just because the center depth on this team is not strong beyond Matthews and Tavares. Um, so if Max Domi is in the third line center, you've got probably like Pontus Holmberg, uh, which isn't fantastic or david Kampf, who is much better as a fourth line center but uh i i do think when they played domi with matthews that was a a really nice uh situation um and and maybe load up a second line with tavares nylander marner like that would that might be that might be a, a a cool a cool thing there uh but then yeah i i could see matthews domi and nyes being being a line like that's that's interesting um, but yeah, I do think Matthew Nice will get a, a decent opportunity, probably a little bit more ice time. And then this guy, this guy just fucking bangs, man. Like, like yeah. he, he's a, he's a big hitter. Um, and then, uh, Bobby McMahon is a guy that I see kind of moving up and down the lineup as well. The left wing position is a little bit volatile on this team. Um, we just don't know how things are going to play out. Uh, there's a lot of guys of similar caliber, but Bobby McMahon showed in limited time that he he has, uh, um, I mean he he's able to produce, um, and uh, he had pretty nice underlying numbers. Uh, he played pretty well with Tavares and and Nylander, uh, and he hits a lot, even more than Matthew Nice. So that's that's a guy that could potentially bring you a little bit of value um, off the waiver wire. Uh, so a guy that I, you should know his name I, at the very least. Um, and then uh, what are what are some other things I wanted to touch on? Oh, yeah, John Tavares. I have him for almost point per game again. Uh, yeah. And uh, that's that's surpri- maybe surprising to some, but he just he had the lowest shooting percentage of his career last year. Um, there were just a lot of reasons to be uh, to be excited about Tavares potentially bouncing back. Uh, maybe the vibes are low. I don't know because they took his captaincy I, I away. Think so. I think so. We'll I think, see. Uh, the vibes are a little low, and he yeah, took his captaincy away. And uh, you know, he again, he pissed off some people last year. He had some some big cold stretches, and you know, I, I'm looking at his ADP at 99.9. That's that's some good value. I, I love when players like this piss off their owners the previous year because that's a good draft season. So I'm into Tavares hundred percent and we'll get into that when i talk about my top three targets uh first let's let's uh let's go to defense let's talk about, so we got morgan riley oliver ekman larson we talked about them before uh walk me through my projections here morgan riley got for eight goals 48 assists 56 points and 139 blocks oel canucks legend oel is gonna get eight goals 29 assists and 37 points canucks legend love to hear it uh still on the books for the vancouver canucks <laughs> uh <laughs> infamously uh yeah so morgan riley i do see him having a bit of a dip uh in production just because uh, i could see there being an opportunity for oel on the power play at least for a limited amount of time um but uh, i mean ultimately uh, riley probably is 
I mean, there's there's a scenario where he still gets over sixty points, um, and and that's a that's a pretty good situation. And he also has pretty decent peripherals for for a guy that has is kind of known for for being like a a straight offensive defenseman. He hits and blocks a decent amount for for someone like that. So uh, he's a guy that that uh, you should still definitely have on your radar. Um, is he a guy? Do you, do you draft Morgan Riley frequently? Uh, I actually. I had a good spree of him. I'm just going to see what his ADP is. Yeah, 82. Um, I don't mind 82 ADP. I, I don't know if I'd draft him this year at that because there, there's quite a few uh, players I'd be eyeing there. Um, I remember having him. Do you remember that one season where he started off like the first two months, like pretty much point per game? Do you remember that? That was like three, four oh, yeah. seasons ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. was a good time. Yeah, I uh, I got a little greedy there, and I uh, overdrafted him many years after that. So kind of kind of sour on the guy, but no, he's he's talented, especially in the Bangers League. Good peripherals, good power play one deployment. Just you know, I, I think people expect a lot more from him just because he's around such elite talent, and he's the quarterback on Toronto. So a lot of expectations on him all the time. Yeah, for sure. Um... And then, yeah, I have Tavares as a sleeper just because people are just, they just think he's old and they're writing him off. But I just, I think he's got gas left in the tank. Bobby McMahon's another guy. I mentioned him before. Uh, my top three targets, John Tavares. Like his his ADP in Yahoo is like uh, right, hovering around 100, whereas previous years you'd be getting him in the third, fourth round. And I think he yeah. could provide you that value. Uh and at pick 100, that's that's unbelievable. So if you're yeah. fading centers, John Tavares is a guy that you should be jumping on uh, in those middle to late rounds. Uh, Mitch Marner, I think, is a guy that uh, people are a little bit lower on just because, I mean, everyone expected him to get traded. He didn't get traded. Um, there's the contract situation. Um, but he's a guy that I think could still, uh, could still get over 100 points. Uh, doesn't have great periffs, but his Yahoo ADP is 31, and I do yeah. think that he could provide you some decent value there. Uh, oh. In Apples and Geno's leagues, he's being picked at the end of the second round, which is probably where he should go. But if you're getting him in the third, like I think, I think uh, a third round Mitch Marner is is really nice value. Uh, and then I've I've got Austin Matthews on here just because I love Austin Matthews. Uh, it, I mean, oh yeah, yeah, uh, he he could he could. Uh, like he's gonna get over sixty goals again. Like it's Easily. it's uh, right. this guy this guy's not human. So, it's uh, year, but yeah, his last ADP. Year we were all laughing. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, and his Yahoo ADP is four point seven. So if you're getting him beyond uh, pick four, uh, I think you're gonna get some nice value for Austin Matthews. Uh, so that's another guy where it's like, yeah, he's right at the top, but he could he could be even better than that. Totally. So, yeah. Depending on your league. Uh, if he falls beyond those top four picks, uh, I'd be jumping all over Matthews. Uh, yeah. Any other comments here? Who who uh, are there? Any other names you wanna you wanna target on this team? No, I think I think we uh, went through everyone. I just wanted to say uh, about Matthews. Uh, it's funny how vibes play into drafting because last year's draft uh, vibes weren't so good because you know the dude had a year uh previous to this, this last one uh he was recovering from wrist injury there was a lot of questions he doesn't have this shot anymore and i was able to get him in the eighth ninth overall sometimes tenth overall last year literally i'm i was in eight or nine leagues and matthews was in almost all of them because vibes were so negative now you're not gonna really get that much value but even at fourth overall he could or, or third overall, he could give you some value. He has potential to to be the second best player. I do you think uh, do you think he still has some room to grow? Matthews. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, it's. I mean, it's possible. Right. Uh, it's hard to imagine just because yeah. of how incredible he's been and how how elite his goal scoring has been. Like I've literally never yeah. seen anyone score like he does so it's yeah. it's hard to imagine but i mean yeah he's what 26 27 yeah. um oh. there could be there could be something more there could be uh yeah a little more ceiling in terms of playmaking but but why would he need to do that if if uh he's just scoring every time he's on the ice yeah. like everyone's trying I'm to curious. get him the puck 
Yeah, I'm so. curious how Barube is going to utilize him. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a fun season. He's always such a fun player to watch. Even all the people who hate the Toronto Maple Leafs, you know, just just watch Matthews play. You got to respect him. He's he's an amazing beast of a man. A hundred percent, hundred percent. I'm glad to hear you say it. I'm glad to hear you say it because when I say it, I just sound like a straight <laughs> homer. Uh, but that is all we have for today. I got to be honest. I thought that we were going uh, way quicker than last week, and somehow <laughs> we yeah. went way longer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it felt like yeah. it was flowing better, but I don't know. It's all good. We're we're uh, we're working through it. We're we're developing chemistry as co-hosts here. Yeah. So. Uh, nice. uh, this is good. It's good. Uh, please leave us a review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Thank you to those who already have. It's helped us so much with our audience growth. Uh, we're hoping to really pop at this time of year. This is a fun time. Uh, we're drafting. We are projecting. Um, and you know what? Training camps are not that far away. We're just a couple weeks out from actual hockey happening which is Can't pretty wait. exciting. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we, we just recently, after last week, uh, hit 1,000 subscribers. So thank you so much for those who have already subscribed, but we're not done yet. We're not done. If you're an audio listener, jump over to the YouTube. Give us a subscribe. Uh, it really does help us out a lot and we really appreciate it. Uh, also, if you like our content, check out the apples and genos Patreon to support us on a monthly basis. And while you're there, check out the apples and genos fantasy hockey draft guide. Um, uh, it's, it's been really popping, been coming off of the digital shelves left and right. Uh, we worked really hard on it and, uh, we're getting some really nice, nice reviews and some nice feedback too. So, so yeah, check that out for sure. Hop into the apples and genos discord server, having tons of discussions about fantasy hockey in there. Shout outs to the band. They're there for providing our music. Their Spotify link is in the episode description. Follow us on X. Nate is at Apple. Genos Blake is at Blake Creamer AG. Gugsy, did you get a did you get an X account yet? <laughs> nah, I didn't get an X account. <laughs> I'll get one. That's later, okay. Nah, don't worry about it. Guggen, I I got that there. So <laughs> there you go, there you go. Yeah. And uh, and I'm at just Josh and four one. Please practice safe stats. Happy drafting. Have a good one, folks. Excellent. Have Soon the one. championship will be ours. All ours. Excellent. Soon the championship will be ours. All ours. Excellent. Soon the championship will be ours. All ours. 